Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if God like Naruto banished and disappears. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Sasuke sat there looking at the limp body on Naruto not believing that he was able to drive him to such an extent that he was almost completely out of chakra. He sensed that another chakra source was coming close and fast he knew if he didn't get out of this area soon he would be caught. He turned and tried to jump into the trees but his legs gave out and he fell flat on his face. As he tried to get up he heard a dog bark. Right Pakun we need to get there before he gets away, said Kakashi. Kakashi got to the area where his two students was and saw ouch bad Naruto was damaged but overlooked it when he saw that Sasuke also looked to be knocked out. He immediately ran to his side to check on his vitals and to make sure he is alive. Kakashi what are you doing we need to get this pup back to the older blonde now or he will die, said Pakun. Kakashi just ignored him and continued to look over Sasuke. After a few more minutes he lifted him up on his shoulder and turned to Naruto. How is it that he was able to fight Sasuke until I got here? That don't matter what the hell is wrong with you Kakashi do you want this pup to die? Yelled Pakun. Just a few yards away heading towards the village was Sume and her partner Kuro. She heard the yell of someone going to die and went to check it out. When she got there she saw what looked like a kid lying on the ground covered in blood with a dog sitting next to him barking loudly. Hey I know you your um. Pakun Kakashi's summon aren't you? She asked. Yes I am but, he was cut off. Shit, isn't that Naruto? Where is the rest of the team that was supposed to be with him? Did they get here in time to stop Sasuke and went ahead to fight him as a medic nin coming to help him so they didn't move him, she asked quickly. Yes this is Naruto, the team is back in the village most of them was hurt doing their part of the mission. Naruto did make it in time to stop Sasuke, Kakashi took him back to the village he just left, said Pakun. What do you mean he just left his student is still laying here dying and he just left? Yay he took the Uchiha back and left Naruto. That bastard I'll rip his insides out, she yelled. Um are you going to take him back to the village before he dies? Of course I am why would I leave him? She then picked him up and put him on the pack of her partner and they ran off towards the village. Inside Naruto's mind, Naruto was just waking up and looked around and couldn't figure out where he was. Everything was dark and wet he was sitting in water that he guessed would be ankle deep if he stood up. After getting fully awake and adjusting to the darkness he stood up and wandered around looking for a light switch or a door. Back in the village, Tsunade had just finished clearing Choji and he was now safely off the critical list but was not allowed to leave the hospital for a few weeks until he had all movement back in his body and had replenished the chakra he lost. She was now standing at the gate waiting for Naruto to come back. Standing a few feet back with Sakura waiting for Sasuke to return she just knew deep down that he would come back to be with her. Shizune was still in the operation room working on Neji. Hinata was sitting outside of his door waiting on the news of if he would be okay. She was also worried for Naruto who still has not come back yet. She wanted to cry not knowing if her love and crush would be okay or not. She took her mind off of things by visiting Lee, Choji, Shikamaru, and Kiba. When she was finished visiting she started to talk to Tamari who saw her sitting by herself and came to sit with her. Kakashi had just arrived at the gate with Sasuke over his shoulder. Tsunade-sama the mission to get Sasuke was complete but I'm sorry that not all made it, he said with a fake sad tone. Sakura was glad to see Sasuke back. Sensei is he okay, she asked. Don't know we have to get him to the hospital and have him check before we truly know, Kakashi said. Stop talking and get the bastard to the hospital before I send him to prison without being looked at, Tsunade snapped. Sakura and Kakashi quickly cleared out towards the hospital. Tsunade looked out towards the direction Kakashi came from one last time before she left to the hospital. Kakashi ran into the hospital. I need a stretcher now, he yelled. The nurse turned and saw Sasuke and got a stretcher quickly. Hinata saw Kakashi come in and walked over to him followed by Tamari, um. Kakashi sensei, she stuttered nervously. Yes Hinata, he answered. Is Naruto back also, she asked. He looked at her with a fake sad smile, sorry Hinata. I know how much you like him and it pains me to have to tell you this, but sometimes when a ninja go on a mission of this caliber they don't come home he is in a better place he finally gets to meet his parents, he said. Hinata and Tamari were so shocked by this that they didn't move when Kakashi and Sakura walked past them. Slowly they came back to reality, 
No, this can't be. Please tell me this is one of his stupid jokes. Hinata started to cry. Come on, Hinata, let's find the Hokage, said Tamari, pulling the girl into a hug while she cried. They walked towards the door of the hospital when Tsunade walked in. She saw the girls walking towards them and told them to follow her. Look, you two, there is something going on and I don't like it, she told Hinata and Tamari. What do you mean, Hokage sama? asked Tamari. Hinata still cried. I told you to call me Tsunade, and I mean something to do with Naruto. I need you two to find Anko and Kurunai and head out to the Valley of Death and see if you can find any trace of Naruto's body dead or alive, she told them. But Tsunade-sama his sensei even said he saw him dead why would he say that if he is not dead, Hinata said with a terribly bad stutter that Tsunade barely understood it. I know what he said but still I want to make sure it's true. Now you can find the two Junins at the Dango spot and hurry I want his body back to me dead or alive, she commanded. They nodded and headed out of the hospital towards the Dango spot. They reached the Dango spot with Hinata still crying hard on Temari's shoulder. Tamari looked around to look for Anko since she didn't know what Kurunai looked like. As she looked she saw someone who she thought could be Anko. Hinata Anko is the lady from the second exam right? She felt Hinata nod on her shoulder. She walked up to the table that held the lady from the exam, um, excuse me but are you Anko, she asked. Anko looked over at her, who wants to know, she asked. Anko leave the kid alone, she probably wants to ask you a question, she then turned and looked at the two, Hinata, she practically yelled. Hinata pushed herself off to Mari and jumped onto Kurunai's arms, sensei this is bad. Why did he have to die? She stuttered out while crying. What, asked Anko. She is crying because Naruto died on the mission to bring back Sasuke, but Sasuke is fine in the hospital being looked at by doctors and Tsunade-sama wants us four to go to the Valley of End to find his body dead or alive, said Tamari. Naruto dead, mumbled Kurunai while rubbing Hinata's back. Well let's get going we have a mission, said Anko. Anko how could you be so rude you know how she feels about him, said Kurunai. I know that but her sitting here crying is not going to make anything better besides I don't think he is dead, said Anko. You mean he could be alive, Anko sensei, stuttered Hinata. Yay it's Hinata, besides Kurunai do you think it would so easily, she said. You're right Anko, said Kurunai. Come on sensei we have to find Naruto-kun if he could be alive he won't survive being by himself, said Hinata pulling her sensei. Okay Hinata we are coming, said Kurunai. They ran to the exit and was about to leave when a group of dogs and Sume came running by. Move need to get to hospital, Sume yelled. They jumped out of the way and saw the biggest dog had Naruto on its back Hinata's heart skipped at how badly injured he was. Oh no he needs help now, said Hinata running over to Naruto who was now lying on the ground since the dog was dead tired from running so far. She ran up and put her ear on his chest where his heart is and got excited when she heard a faint heartbeat. Sensei he is alive but won't make it to the hospital we need to do something to give him a little extra time, she said. None of you would happen to know any medic jutsus would you, asked Sume. They all shook their heads no with a sad look on their faces. Hinata took off her pack and started to throw stuff out of it onto the ground around her. Um Hinata what are you doing, asked Kurunai. She didn't answer just kept going through her pack until she found what she was looking for, found it, she said happily. She then opened the medium-sized jar up and they all were hit by the fragrance of the smell. It had a lavender smell to it. She started to rub the stuff inside the jar all over Naruto's body she did this with a small blush on her face. Done I hope it gives us enough time to get to Tsunade, she said. No time like now to find out, said Anko grabbing the boy bridal style and running off towards the hospital followed by the rest. They ran into the hospital and looked around and saw everything stop and all eyes were on them. Where the fuck is Tsunade? Anko yelled at the top of her lungs. Anko this is a hospital, said Shizun coming around the corner. No time for games Shizun he needs help now, replied Anko, putting Naruto on the stretcher that Shizun had. You know this was for someone, she finally looked at the person on the stretcher, else. Should get me a room ready now and go find Tsunade now whatever she is doing it can wait, Shizun yelled out orders. The nurses looked at the boy and didn't move. What the fuck are you doing standing around you was given orders by your superior and you are not obeying them, asked Anko leaking out her key. The nurses scrambled to find a free room and locate Tsunade. Tsunade-sama you're needed now, 
said one nurse running into the room that Sasuke was in. I'm busy I'm sure it can wait, she replied. Um Shizun said what you're doing could wait, the nurse replied. What could be so important, asked Tsunade. The last member of that team was just brought in by Anko, Hinata, Kurinai, Sume, and Tamari from Suna, the nurse said. Tsunade glared at Kakashi then headed for the door, Tsunade-sama what about Sasuke, he asked. He is fine all that was wrong was he used too much chakra, if you're wondering I was not going to heal him he is going to stay like that and I'll talk to you later Kakashi, she then walked out the room following the nurse. She walked into the room that held Naruto and saw Sume, Anko, Kurinai, Tamari, and Hinata sitting in the chairs that was in the room she also saw Shizun hooking Naruto up to some IVs, give me a report of his condition, she said to Shizun. I don't know how but whatever they did on the way here saved his life even it don't seem to be able to completely heal him for some reason and if we don't act now all the effort to get him here will be in vain, said Shizun. Okay let's get started, said Tsunade. They stood on either side of Naruto and their hands started to glow green and Tsunade worked on the upper part of his body while Shizun worked on the lower part. In Naruto's mind, Naruto finally found a small walkway that led him down a small corridor. As he walked he saw the multiply images of his past and started to run. As he ran the hall got longer, stop, he yelled. It continued, please stop I'll do anything please stop these images, he cried. The images then stopped. Boy stand up and look at me, said a voice. He slowly got off his knees and looked at the figure he sniffed. Who are you and where am I, he asked. You are in your mind and I'm the great Kayubi no Kitsune, said the figure. What you're supposed to be dead. Then the memories of when he passed the genin exam showed, right I forgot. Don't forget again or I'll kill you, said Kayubi. Bullshit if you do that then you also die, Naruto yelled. You really think that want to try, asked Kayubi. Naruto hesitated, no, he said. Good now we need to talk, said Kayubi. I don't want to talk to you, said Naruto. You have no choice in the matter, said Kayubi then used its chakra to force Naruto to sit. Now you're about to learn what has happened throughout your entire life, Naruto was about to interrupt but Kayubi stopped him, I'm not talking about the things you know about but what you don't, you see ever since you was born there has been a group of people trying to have to killed or exiled and unfortunately with the last mission you went on it is a high possibility you will be exiled if not killed, now this is a problem for you because it would end your life for something you have no control over, but all is not lost because from what I can tell you have a few friends who won't let you be killed, said Kayubi. How do you know all this? I know more than you think but you have to find out yourself but trust me that blonde lady won't let anything happen without a fight. Now you need to learn that you don't control me or my power and I could get out of this cell anytime I want so you better show respect when talking to me got it, said Kayubi. What makes you think you scare me I know you can't get out of that cage or it will kill you. And just because you're bigger and stronger does not mean I'll back down from you, yelled Naruto. I like you, most other people would have shit themselves by now. But no if you try my patience I will punish you, said Kayubi. Whatever just because you men are bigger than me doesn't mean I'll just sit by and take shit from you guys I'm tired of being bullied by bigger people, yelled Naruto. Did you just call me a guy, asked Kayubi. Yes why does it matter you are a guy, he said. A burst of chakra came from the cage and it blew open and Kayubi was out with a tail around Naruto's neck holding him up against the wall looking directly into his eyes. On the outside. Tsunade and Shizun quickly pulled their hands back when they saw the burst of red chakra come from Naruto's seal they shared a look and looked back down at Naruto. Hinata and Tamari looked surprised at the chakra coming from Naruto. Sume, Anko, and Kurinai got ready to fight if they need to. Sensei what's that chakra, asked Hinata. I'll tell you later, but don't tell anyone about this, said Tsunade she just hoped that no one outside this room could feel his chakra. Inside Naruto's mind, if you want to continue to live you will not call me a guy ever again in your life, said Kayubi. Naruto slowly nodded, good now if you're lucky I'll train you but first you need to learn respect and it's time for you to wake up and with the help of the two medic nins you're completely healed, said Kayubi dropping Naruto then using her chakra to push him out of his mind. Back outside, Naruto slowly opened his eyes and moaned out as the light from the room was the first thing he saw. Everyone heard the moan and was up and around the bed and immediately. Ba Chan is going to kill me for almost dying like that, he said while his eyes adjust. 
Damn right I am Gaki who gave you permission to try and die like that, said Tsunade. Sorry you said to bring Sasuke back, Naruto said finally getting his eyes adjusted. Naruto-kun are you okay, stuttered Hanada. I'm fine, he said. That's good now what happened, said Tsunade. Naruto explained everything leaving out the part about Kayubi. I see so he did use that seal to get more power, said Tsunade. He doesn't know what he is doing, said Anko. What do you mean, asked Sume. That seal was made for the purpose of feeding off emotions and if he let it control him like that then he is completely under Orochimaru's control nothing short of giving exactly what he wants will keep him in this village unless of course you seal his chakra then the seal can't work because it needs his chakra to move around, said Anko. I see thanks for telling me, said Tsunade. So he back the mission was complete how is everyone else doing, asked Naruto. Well three of you were in near a death state and not one of the three was Sasuke he was unconscious from using too much chakra, said Tsunade. And Anbu came into the room, Hokage-sama the council has called a meeting and you're needed, said the Anbu. Thanks you can go, I'll be back as soon as I can Shizun go check on the other please, said Tsunade. She and Shizun then walked out of the room. A few minutes later Sakura walked into the room looking pissed. Um, Sakura-san are you okay? asked Hanada. I'm fine I just need to talk to my teammate can we have some privacy please it won't take long I just want to um, thank him, she said. The others walked out the room to wait, Hanada watching on them, said Kurenai. What why would I spy on Naruto's private conversation, asked Hanada. You spy on him any other time, Hanada blushed deep at that. But this time he might need help since Tsunade used a paralysis jutsu to keep him from moving while his body heal, said Kurenai. Fine by Akugan, she mumbled then blushed even redder, oops too much chakra. The others just looked at her with a shocked look. With Sakura and Naruto, Sakura-chan I'm happy you came I even kept my promise and brought him back like I said I would, he said happily. Naruto shut up I asked you to bring him back not hurt him you know how this could mess up his future. No you didn't even think about it you just did whatever you wanted. Why do you have to be so stupid not even able to do a simple request right? I can't stand you I hate you for what you did, she yelled. What but I kept my promise, he said. She started to beat him badly, promise you almost killed him. He is an Uchiha the last Uchiha and you almost killed him how stupid can you get no wonder your parents didn't want you, she yelled again. Naruto and Hinata had tears forming in their eyes. Hinata ran to the door and tried to open it but it wouldn't. That bitch locked the door that's why she wanted to be alone, yelled Hinata. Hinata what's wrong, asked Tamari. She is in there beating him because he fought the Uchiha and he can't defend himself, she said. She what? yelled Anko, Kurenai, and Sume at the same time. Hinata move, said Anko getting ready to kick the door in. Sakura was getting ready to hit him again when someone stopped her hand and threw her through the door. She looked up and saw an Anbu with what looked like a rabbit mask on but couldn't see if it was a male or not because every part of their body was covered not even the hair was showing. Thank Kami, and Anbu stopped her said Hinata now banging on the door. Sakura was on the opposite side of the room from the door so the Anbu opened it. As soon as the door was opened Hinata flew in the room and attacked Sakura not even bothering to use Jukin instead preferring to use her tiny fist. The others were shocked except Naruto who was knocked out by Sakura's hits. Hinata stop get off of her, said Kurenai getting over her shock. Kurenai finally pulled Hinata off Sakura who quickly got up and ran for the door. Hold it Pinky your lucky Kurenai was here because I would have let her continue to beat you but know this if you ever attack Naruto again you will have more than Hinata kicking your ass, said Tamari when she grabbed Sakura's arm as she ran past her. Sakura glared at Tamari then shook her off and continued out of the room. Thank you Anbu-san for stopping her, said Hinata. What happened to Sakura she just asked me to heal her, said Shizun walking into the room. Hinata beat the shit of her, said Anko with a smile. What Hinata but she is the sweetest person ever what could possibly make her that mad, said Shizun. Attempt to beat her crush to a pulp and find out, said Sume. Really wow, how is Naruto though, said Shizun walking up to him. Probably knocked out again, but forget that for now we need to find a way to get Hinata like that all the time she will be kick ass if we could, said Anko. Anko you will not turn her into a chibi you, said Kurenai. Hell we could turn her into a chibi you with a little bit of me, or a chibi shizun with a little bit of both of us, 
said Anko with a hunter look in her eyes while looking at Hinata. Anko stop now is not the time to try and turn Hinata into a chibi anybody, said Kuranai. What the hell is all the commotion and what are you talking about turning Hinata into a chibi, said a pissed off Tsunade walking into the room closing the door behind her. Hinata beat the living shit out of Pinky, said Tamari. Pinky, questioned Tsunade. I caught Sakura-san beating on Naruto-kun during my patrol around the outside the hospital I threw her off then opened the door when Hinata-san introduced her small fist to Sakura-san's face, said the Anbu. Sakura did wa. Hinata you beat up Sakura for hitting Naruto why, said Tsunade. Hinata blushed now that she was the center of attention she also looked like she was going to faint, Hinata you wouldn't have anything more than a simple crush on my oh tuto would you, teased Shizune. Hinata turned bright red and fainted, I'll take that as a yes, said Shizune. This is just great, said Tsunade. What's wrong Hokage-sama, said Kuranai. The council had a meeting on this mission more specifically Naruto and Sasuke, she said. What did they say, asked Sume. Naruto will either be banished or killed and Sasuke will marry the female heir to every clan, said Tsunade. What who the hell do they think they are that they can just offer my daughter off to that traitorous bastard, said Sume. But listen to this Hiyashi was the first to offer his daughter and said that she will act as head as the Uchiha since they all voted to have his chakras sealed, said Tsunade. How could he offer her to him without even asking Hinata doesn't even like Sasuke, said Kuranai. Hinata had just come to at that point and looked confused, why would I like him, she asked. Your father offered to have you married to him said Tamari before anyone else could say something. Hinata looked terrified, no I don't want to marry him, I hate him, I want to marry Naruto-kun and help him build a clan, she then stopped releasing what she just said and covered her mouth. Tsunade got a thoughtful look on her face when she heard that, Tsunade-sama whatever you're thinking stop, said Shizun. Hinata would you do anything to be with Naruto, she nodded, Naruto is being banished for attacking Sasuke so if you mean that I could banish you for attacking Sakura, said Tsunade. Wait what are you planning I know it's more than just banishing Hinata to be with Naruto, said Shizune. Oh it is I'm not staying in this village without Naruto, and since the council want to challenge me I'll play their game it's time for them to know exactly who they're messing with, said Tsunade. I like where this is going, said Sume. Do you want your daughter to marry Sasuke, Tsunade asked. Nope I would rather her marry the pup, Sume said. Good let's wake Naruto up, said Tsunade walking over to him. She started a jutsu that would wake him when his seal glowed red again Tsunade jumped back. Hello everyone, said a voice. Who are you, asked Tamari. Who am I? Who the fuck else was sealed in him by that damn Minato? Damn his father if it wasn't for him you wouldn't be having this problem, the voice said. Wake your Kayubi how are you out of the seal, asked Shizune. Yes I'm the one and only Kayubi and I could have got out of the seal at any time when I woke up but I decided not to because it would have killed him, said Kayubi. What are you talking about, asked Tsunade. How is Kayubi dead didn't the fourth kill him, asked Hinata. Him again with the sexist shit it is starting to annoy me and no he didn't kill me as I said he sealed me and his son although stupid was noble. But what I want to know is why has no one punished the person for killing his mother, said Kayubi. What are you talking about I thought Kashina died giving birth, said Tsunade. No she was killed I'm guessing the old man decided not to investigate and decided to blame that on me also. Anyway she was killed by a snake I'm sure you all know who did it now. Also I have an idea, she finished. What's the idea, asked Tsunade. If I heard you right the council kicked him out this worthless village and you are planning to take the Hayuga girl. Why not take her sensei to teach her genjutsu? the snake lady to teach her that taijutsu she use, and the anbu that saved him from that pink-haired bitch to teach speed and stamina, and also weapons, said Kayubi. That's a good idea what do you all think, said Tsunade. Naruto's father is the Yandaimi Hokage, Hinata finally said. Um yay but don't tell anyone, said Tsunade. So let me get this straight, Hinata started thinking, Naruto was used to hold Kayubi when he was a baby and had no decision, the adults nodded. Then he was blamed for everything. They nodded. They think he a Kayubi in human form. They nodded. Naruto is the son of the greatest hero in Konoha's history. They nodded again. Okay when do I pack? She finished. Whoa slow down Hinata packing won't be for another two days. We have to finish plans and screwing over the village for what they did. 
said Tsunade. Wait you just going to up and leave the village but you're the Hokage, said Tamari. Look I only came back because of Naruto why should I stay, Tsunade asked. Tamari stayed quiet. Okay we all know Hinata is going to now marry Naruto, but I want to have Hana my oldest and heir to my clan marry him also, said Sume. What why, said Hinata. I'm going to use the clan restoration act, said Tsunade. Oh, said Hinata looking sad. Wait how do you even know me, Kurinai, and the Anbu will go with you, said Anko. You just threatened the entire hospital staff when they refused to help Naruto, said Kayubi. I know that they was being stupid for not treating them but all I have is here, said Anko. Anko we both know you are only here because if you left the council would have had every available ninja junin end up out trying to kill you and if I leave you will come with me even if I don't ask you to and since Hinata is leaving I'm going with her, said Kuranai. Fine you always had to have it your way don't you, said Anko. I have a question why did Anko bring Naruto in and not his sensei, I saw him come into the village with Sasuke, asked the rabbit Anbu. The bastard left him for dead, said Sume angrily. Everyone looked shocked at this except Tsunade and Kayubi. He did what when I catch that one-eyed pervert I'm going to beat him to a pulp, said Anko. With Kakashi, Kayubi appeared in a burst of fire right in front of Kakashi who was still in Sasuke's room. He looked up surprised that someone would enter a hospital room without using the door. He looked at her and noticed that he didn't recognize who she was, um, sorry but you're not supposed to be here, he said. Hitaki you will only speak when I tell you to, she said. I don't know who you think you are but you will not speak to me like you're my better, he replied. Quiet pervert I am your superior and if you speak out of turn again I will kill you, she said releasing some of her key. Kakashi was surprised at how much key she was leaking he had to release his own to be able to stand his ground. I will speak when I want, now what are you doing here answer now or I will have to turn you in, he said. You are trying my patience pervert. Now I'm here about your actions earlier, she said. I don't know what you're talking about, said Kakashi. Tsunade ran into the room at this time. Kakashi you're still alive, she said surprised. Why would I not be Hokage-sama, he asked. Shut up you're still being punished for leaving Naruto out there to die, said Tsunade Kakashi gulped. Enough I have had enough of this. Hitaki you have ignored and tried your hardest to keep Naruto from being the ninja he could be since you met him and I am fed up with your treatment of him and this last stunt you pulled almost cost him his life, said Kayubi getting angry. What are you talking about if anything it would do well because it would kill Kayubi, he said. You think I could be killed so easily by this pathetic excuse of a ninja? You're sadly mistaken and the only reason I don't kill you for how you treated Naruto is because he don't know you left him for dead and if I do it would make him depressed, but know this if you do anything to try and stop his growth into a good ninja I will kill you, she said. Your threats don't scare me, I don't know who you are but you will watch your tone when talking to me, he said. Kayubi just looked at him with a deadpan look, Hitaki if your sensei could only seal me what chance do you have when you're not even half as strong as he is, she said. What seal you that means you're, he stopped mid-sentence. The one and only Kayubi, and you have your one and only warning now get out of my sight before I change my mind and kill you where you stand, she said releasing more ki and her nine tails. Kakashi you better be in my office in one hour and don't be late or else, Tsunade said. When Kayubi got in the room Naruto was woke talking to the people who was in the room. Hinata kept a blush on her face and would glance at him then look away. So why are there so many people in here I never had a visitor before when I was in the hospital, asked Naruto. Naruto-kun you always had a visitor but only when you was asleep, said Kayubi. What where did you come from how did you get out, yelled Naruto everyone in the room sweat dropped by this. Did you forget already didn't I just kick your ass in your mind for thinking that getting out of that cage was beneath me, said Kayubi. Oh yay I forgot, mumbled Naruto. They sweat dropped again. Naruto how is it possible to forget something like that, asked Danko. I don't know snake lady but I forget things all the time if it doesn't involve a jutsu, he said. You have a one track mind just like your mother, said Sume. You knew my mother, he asked. Yeah you act exactly like her and if something doesn't involve a jutsu the chance of you remembering it is less than 10%, said Sume. Are you calling me stupid, asked Naruto. Sume just shrugged. I have to go I got to tell Hannah the news that the council decided, she said. What news, asked Naruto. You are being punished for injuring the Uchiha. You might be kicked out if they have their way, 
said Kayubi. What why I had to defend myself, said Naruto. I know but they punishing you because they think you tried to kill him, said Kayubi. What I didn't kill him he attacked me, you was there you saw the entire thing I was trying to talk him into coming back until he just attacked. It took all I had just not to get hit by his attacks he never even gave me the chance to attack and then he hit me with a chidori right where my heart is how can they blame that on me, said Naruto. Do you really think they would take the word of me Kayubi, she asked. What am I going to do I have no family and I never had any friends, he started to cry. Naruto shut up you're sounding stupid and if I ever hear you saying you had no friends I'll kill you, said Kayubi. What why, he asked. How stupid can you be? Who was here when you woke up? He was about to answer. That was rhetorical. Who was there when you needed someone to talk to? Who went out of there was to heal you every time you did something stupid and got hurt? Who gave you healing cream after you fought her teammate? Who gave you the confidence to fight Neji when you wasn't going to show up? You have friends you're just too damn dense to see past that pink haired bitch. Said Kayubi. Hey Sakura Chan aren't that bad yay she has anger problems but she's still not that bad. He jumped on his feet facing Kayubi defended his crush. This got Kayubi even more mad in a flash her hand was around his neck and his back against the wall at her eye level, not that bad you say? She has went out of her way multiple times to hurt you. She beat you for asking for her help chakra control. She beat you when you asked her on a date when she could have just said no. She beat you every time you mentioned Sasuke name. She beat you just for looking at her too long. Have you ever thought about what would have happened if I didn't heal you after those beatings? No, I'll tell you, you would have been dead a long time ago by your teammate, by that bitch, and you're telling everyone that you love her that she will see you for who you are? News flash Naruto she hates you and every fiber of you and I have had it with you always defending her and this stops now. Listen and listen good you have been near death twice since you woke up this morning and you know who put you there? No, those two was Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. That's right after you came back to the village she came in here and literally beat you into an inch of your life and if it wasn't for that Anbu coming when she did you would have been dead. Do you know who repaid her for what she did? Hinata Hayuga. That's right the only person who have been there when you needed to talk the only person who actually cared for your well-being the only person to actually show you what it is like to be loved and how do you repay her you shove her to the side just to run back to the one who consistently beat you, she said. Naruto was stunned to speak so he just looked at his feet. What you always have something to say why not now to ashamed of yourself good you need to be, said Kayubi. Sorry, he mumbled. What, said Kayubi. Sorry, he said a little louder. Still can't hear you, Kayubi said. I said sorry, he yelled. So what are you sorry for, asked Kayubi. I'm sorry for everything, he said. Be more specific, she said. You can read my thoughts you know why, he said. They can't though tell them they are the ones who need to hear it not me, she told him and stop looking at your feet and look at them, she added. I'm sorry for not being smart enough to realize that I had friends, I'm sorry that I pushed you away, I'm sorry that I made you cry, I'm sorry that I defend Sakura when I shouldn't, please forgive me, he said. Good now go and ask again for their forgiveness, demanded Kayubi. Naruto walked over to Anko first, Anko-chan please forgive me for everything I did to make you feel bad, he said. Buy me Dango and you're forgiven, she said. Okay. He went to Tamari next. I know we haven't known each other long but I still want your forgiveness for not trying more to be your friend Tamari-chan, he said. Sure you're forgiven, she said. He went to went to Kurinai next, Kurinai-sensei I'm sorry for not showing how grateful I am for knowing you. You have been more a sensei to me than my own sensei and I'm sorry, he said. Naruto don't beat yourself up over it I know you're grateful, she told him. He next walked to Hinata. Hinata-chan I'm sorry for pushing you away. I'm sorry for not talking to you more, and I'm sorry for not telling you thank you for everything you did to help me, but I just didn't think that the princess of Konoha would want to talk to me more than you already did, he said. Naruto-kun I'm no princess, and I forgive you for everything, she smiled at him with a deep blush on her face. Now that we have things to discuss, said Kayubi. Like what, asked Naruto. You have been lacking in proper training besides the basics that Kurinai, Anko, and the Anbu lady taught you, she said. Oh, he said looking down. Cheer up brat you get to be trained by me, Kurinai now, said Anko with a smile. Why do I have the feeling that I won't like this, he said. Naruto was released from the hospital and was walking around to get some ramen. As he walked he thought about everything that happened and more so what Kayubi told him about Hinata. 
He couldn't figure for the life of him why Hinata would waste so much time being nice to him. He liked that she was a friend and how she treated him but he didn't understand it. He walked into the restaurant and ordered his usual 12 bowls of ramen and waited while Ayame went to the kitchen to get his food ready. Kayubi who was still out of the seal walked in behind him and sat next to him. What's on your mind Naru-kun? she asked. I don't get why Hinata would waste her time being so nice to me when everyone else hates me, he said. Well you will have to ask her, said Kayubi. I don't know what to do. The two who I thought as a sister and brother both tried to kill me yet someone who I barely knows ends up being the best friend I have, he said. Sometimes life works like that, said Kayubi. This is too difficult, said Naruto. It's just new to you soon you will understand everything. Oh someone is coming to talk to you I'll give you some privacy, said Kayubi getting up and walking out the restaurant and Ino walked up and sat in her seat. Hey Naruto, she said. Hi Ino what brings you here, asked Naruto. Look Naruto I know I haven't been the best friend but you should know that not everyone is like the villagers, said Ino. I know that, but what does that have to do with anything, asked Naruto. Naruto just know if no one else will you always have a friend in me and if you need you can always come to me for help, she said. Thank you Ino that means a lot to me, said Naruto. Just always look at the positives and don't let the negatives bring you down. She then got up and hugged Naruto. You will always be my friend and thank you for everything you did to complete your mission. She then kissed him on the cheek and walked out. Naruto was stunned by what Ino did. He didn't notice Kayubi walk back in and sit next to him. Did something happen? She asked snapping Naruto out of his daze. She kissed me, he said. I know I saw. Now you know not everyone is as closed minded as that pink haired bitch, said Kayubi. What do I do about it no one has never kissed me like that before besides Ba-chan and that was more like a motherly kiss, said Naruto. Want my advice, asked Kayubi. Yes, said Naruto. I suggest you go to Tsunade and ask her about your family, said Kayubi. What does that have to do with anything, asked Naruto. It will help you understand why you was picked to have me sealed in you and what to do with Hinata and Ino, said Kayubi. Okay I will, said Naruto. Naruto your food is done, said Ayame bringing him out his ramen. After I eat I'm starving, he then scarfed down his ramen but Kayubi stole one of his bowls and ate it. Hey what should I call you I don't want to keep calling you Kayubi or Fox, said Naruto. Call me Q, she said. Okay come on Q let's go see Ba-chan unless you want to do something else, it doesn't matter to me, said Naruto. No I'll come with you, said Q. They then walked to the Hokage's tower. Ba-chan I need to talk to you, he said walking into the office. Gaki didn't I tell you to knock when you come in here, Tsunade said throwing a stapler at him. Hey that hurts, yelled Naruto after being hit dead square between the eyes. That was the point, yelled back Tsunade. Naruto you wanted to talk to us, asked Shizun stopping their little fight. Oh yeah I want to ask about my parents, he said. Tsunade looked surprised then sighed, I knew you would be asking soon, she said. What do you mean, he asked. Well I wasn't going to tell you until you was ready, said Tsunade. What I'm more than ready to know who my parents are and I think I deserve to know, said Naruto. No I mean ready as in being able to defend yourself from the enemies that will come for you once they find out who your parents are, but with recent events they will find out soon so I guess I better tell you now, said Tsunade. Naruto was about to say something but was stopped by Tsunade putting her hand up to stop him, Naruto sit down, she said. Naruto and Kayubi sat down, Naruto what do you think about the Yandaimi, she asked. Just then Anko and Ino walked into the office, Tsunade I have a request, she said. Anko it needs to wait, Naruto answer my question, Tsunade said. Well I respect the Yandaimi for his strength and his skills, I look up to him as a figure of my goal to be stronger than him and I hope to take his position as a Hokage, said Naruto. Shizun, Anko. Tsunade, Ino, and Q nodded all knowing how he looked up to the Yandaimi. Now can you describe how he looked? Tsunade asked. Of course he had blonde spiky hair, blue eyes, and was every energetic, said Naruto. Good Ino can you describe Naruto for me? asked Tsunade. Ino shrugged, sure, blonde spiky hair, blue eyes. He is the Yandaimi's son, said Ino after looking at him in the picture of the Yandaimi. Tsunade nodded, Naruto looked even more confused, huh, he asked. Naruto, Minato Namikaze the Yandaimi is your father, 
and Kashina Uzumaki as your mother both are dead, said Tsunade. What am the son of the Yandaimi, he asked. Yes, I wanted to wait until you can defend yourself from his enemies to tell you, said Tsunade. So why didn't the old man tell me or at least the people of the village they would have treated me better, said Naruto. Naruto you have to think about it for a minute, you know who the biggest spoiled brat right, asked Danko. Yes Sasuke why, asked Naruto. Well if you was just given anything you wanted you would have been just like him taking everything for granted and not giving a damn about people who care for you and personally I'm glad you wasn't told until now, said Anko. What how do you know I would have turned out like that, yelled Naruto. You hold what little friends you have dear don't you, asked Tsunade. Of course I do Bachan I would do anything to keep them safe, said Naruto. Now what would you have done if people only wanted to be your friends because you was the son of the Yandaimi, asked Tsunade. I probably would have ignored them and told them to stay away from me, said Naruto. Just like the Uchiha bastard, said Kayubi. I guess you're right but at least the old man could have done more to help me, said Naruto. You're right he could have and why didn't he I don't know but it was the second biggest mistake he ever made and I'm going to try to correct it, now Eno how can I help you, said Tsunade. I want permission learn medics at the hospital, said Eno. Sure let me write you a note to get you a teacher from the medic corps said Tsunade writing her a note and sending her to the hospital. Now you said the second biggest then what was the biggest, asked Naruto. Not killing Orochimaru the first time he was caught doing experiments on civilians and shinobis, said Tsunade. Now Naruto-kun we have some bad news for you, said Shizun. What's that no one died from the mission did they, asked Naruto. Besides the people from sound know this involves you, said Shizun. What meat he asked. Yes you're banished, said Tsunade. What banished how could you do this to me Bachan I thought you liked me what have I done to you, he yelled at her. Naruto it wasn't me I tried everything I could to stop it, but the council went to the daimyo and got his approval to have you banished or executed it was my choice on which one, Tsunade said. Sorry, but why I did everything I was ever told, he said. I know Naruto, but they won't get away with this. I want you to get all your stuff packed. The council have granted you permission to take one scroll with you so use it well. I had Jiraiya send me one of his large storage scrolls for you, Tsunade said. Thank you Ba-chan, he whispered. Don't mention it, but remember you have two days to be gone. I want you to be ready tomorrow morning to leave. Now take this scroll and get packed, said Tsunade. Come on Naruto let's go get packed, said Kayubi. Oh Naruto you have my permission to pull one last prank on anyone but those from the Yamanaka, Nara. Akamichi, and Aburame, said Tsunade with a wink. Right Kasen, he said then ran out the office. Tsunade, Anko, and Shizun looked at where he was just standing in surprise wondering if they heard him correct. Did he just call me mother? asked Tsunade. I think so, said Shizun. He always thought of you as a mother since he met you. He thought that since you was so protective of him you must see him as a son. And he needed a mother and you was the perfect one in his opinion. You should see how much respect he has for you. He respects you more than the Yandaimi. Since you have been in his life he has been able to remove some of the negative effect that this village had on his life slowly. His mind is no longer a dirty wet dark sewer. Although it's still a wet sewer it's cleaner and has light and if you keep having such a positive influence on him pretty soon his mind might become a library full of jutsus he knows or something, said Kayubi. All this because of me, whispered Tsunade. Yes believe it or not even Sarutobi didn't have this much of an effect on him in the 12 years he has known him, said Kayubi. Naruto, my son I like the sound of that, smiled Tsunade. He will be happy to hear, he also thinks very highly of you Shizun, and I would even say he thinks of you in a higher light than Kuranai or Anko and that's pretty damn good considering every time he is hurting he always went to one of them, said Kayubi. Well he is my Otuto now and has been since I met him, said Shizun. Well while I enjoyed talking to you all I better catch up with Naruto I have something to set up for pranks and a few places to raid since the scroll is way too big for the stuff he owns, said Kayubi walking out the door. Well looks like we all made an impact on the Gaki but none as significant as Tsunade, said Anko. Well Anko what did you need I need to start revenge on what the council did to my son, said Tsunade. First I want in. Second I want to be promoted to Junin I think I have paid my dues for what Orochimaru did and if anything I shouldn't be held back for that anyway it was the third's fault he got as far as he did, 
And lastly I want the actual reason I came here was because I wanted to talk to you about teaching Hinata my style since I can't take her on as an apprentice I think I should at least be able to teach her my style and let her sign the snake contract, said Anko. Okay you in on our revenge be ready tomorrow you will escort Naruto out of the village. You're granted the rank Junin as I think you should have been had it I don't know why Sensei didn't give it to you when he gave it to Kuranai. And as for teaching Hinata your style if she wants to learn it you have my permission, said Tsunade. Thank you, said Anko. No thank you, said Tsunade. For what, asked Anko. For the idea, I'm going to make Hinata my apprentice can you tell her to come to my office as soon as possible. Shizune I need you to go to the Sarutobi compound and tell Asuma and his nephew to come to the office, said Tsunade. Tsunade started going through her drawers and cabinets in the office until she found a cabinet full with things from Minato and Kashina for Naruto. She shook her head and willed her anger at her sensei away. She couldn't understand how he could just sit back and watch all this happen and not do anything to stop it. She smiled as she knew it all would end soon and Naruto would have a better life. She pulled everything out and set in on her desk and started to seal it until a knock came on the door, come in, she said. You wanted to see me Hokage-sama, stuttered Hinata. Ah yes thank you for being prompt Hinata but I have something to ask you. How would you like to be a medic nin, she asked. I can't, stuttered Hinata. Don't lie Hinata. Tsunade threw a small jar to her. I got that from Naruto when he came with Jiraiya to bring me back when he told me you made it I was highly impressed but looking at your record I don't see anything that would suggest you have medic training, said Tsunade. I don't, Hyugas are not supposed to be medics we are meant to be combat nins not support nins and I'm started to have more confidence in my abilities to be a combat nin, stuttered the little Hyuga. I'm not saying you won't be a combat nin Anko did talk with you about wanting to teach you her style right, asked Tsunade. Yes, said Hinata. Well she is a combat and assassin nin, if you learn her style and medics you will be a combat nin who can also support your team when you needs to, said Hinata. Who would want to teach the failure of the Hyuga clan, asked Hinata. Don't worry about that you will be my apprentice, said Tsunade. Hinata stared unbelieving at her. Please tell me this is not a joke to get my hopes up just to bring me back down and tell me how much a failure I am, stuttered Hinata with tears in her eyes expecting the worst. Tsunade's smile faltered, those bastards have made her afraid to take risks when they would help her greatly, don't worry Hinata this is no joke if you want you will become my second apprentice and also study under Anko until you know everything she can teach you, said Tsunade. Hinata looked at Tsunade then jumped up and down in excitement. She then jumped over the desk and tackled Tsunade in a hug making her fall back on her chair. This is the best news ever. I will do everything to make you proud of me, said Hinata. Don't worry Hinata I know you will work hard all that I ask is to believe in yourself. Don't be afraid of risks, and work on not stuttering, said Tsunade. Hi I will work on it, said Hinata with a little stutter. Good now go get packed we are leaving tomorrow, said Tsunade. What tomorrow I thought you said we had two days, asked Hinata. Yes I'm not staying in a village that banished my son more than I have to, said Tsunade. Son, asked Hinata. He is like a son to me and he called me Kasan without even thinking about it, said Tsunade. I see well I'm going to pack, said Hinata. Here is a scroll pack whatever you can fit in it. Remember you might be away for a while so you will need scrolls to help you with your Jukin style so make sure you pack plenty of those scrolls, said Tsunade. Hi I'll be ready tomorrow. She then ran out of the office to leave Tsunade to do what she was doing. Asuma and nephew came in. Hokage-sama you wanted to see us, asked Asuma. Yes I want you to sign the monkey contract, said Tsunade. I don't think I'm ready for that yet and Konohamaru does not have the chakra capacity to sign it, said Asuma. I wasn't requesting I was telling you both to sign it now, said Tsunade. Asuma sighed and signed the scroll with Konohamaru. Good now Asuma summon the highest monkey you can, Tsunade commanded. Asuma summoned a monkey, so you finally signed the contract, asked the monkey. Didn't have a choice and I would have signed it anyway, said Asuma. Excuse me can you have King Enma come talk to me as soon as possible, Tsunade asked the monkey. Sure, the monkey then disappeared and King Enma was in his spot, how can I help you Tsunade, asked the monkey. I want to ask you if someone who is not in the Sarutobi family can sign the contract, she said. That depends, said the monkey king. Tsunade-sama you're not talking about Naruto are you, asked Asuma. How did you know, asked Tsunade. 
Is the rumor true? asked Asuma. Sadly it is, Naruto is being banished by the council, said Tsunade. What they can't do that to Nissan, yelled Konohamaru. Unfortunately they can this time Konohamaru since they have the daimyo backing them on this, said Tsunade. I'll think about it Tsunade, is this all you wanted, asked Denma. Yes thank you for hearing me out, Tsunade said. No thanks are necessary what the council are doing is wrong. But don't let them get away with this and you must punish the Uchiha or I won't even consider it, said Enma. I was going to do that anyway, said Tsunade. Good, now Asuma you will take your father's position as the head of the contract and when Konohamaru is old enough you will be able to pass it down to him, said Enma. Okay, said Asuma. Enma then disappeared. Should I get you a copy of father's scrolls from the house, he asked. That would be most helpful, said Tsunade. Good day. Then Asuma and Konohamaru left. Shizune walked in the office. I hope you don't mind that I took the liberty of putting everything in the Namikaze compound inside a few scrolls and have them with me now, she said. Good thinking Shizune. I need you to do the same thing at the Senji compound while I go to the Hokage library, said Tsunade. Naruto and Kayubi was walking through the village since they had already packed the things from Naruto's apartment that they thought that Naruto would need. Kayubi had managed to convince Naruto that he should not take his orange clothes but get some new ones that he wasn't so noticeable. He argued that he didn't have any money and no one here besides Tenton shop would sell anything to him anyway, she told him they would worry about that later tonight. So here they was walking looking for something to take up the rest of the day since it was too early to set up the pranks they had planned. Naruto Nissan, they heard. Hey guys, Naruto said turning around and seeing Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon running up to them. Naruto Nissan why do you have to leave, asked Moegi. I can't do anything to stop this from happening, but while I'm gone I want you three to promise you will train hard, said Naruto. We promise, they all said. I have an idea, said Q. What's that Q, asked Naruto. Let's prank everyone who is not your friend, she said. Sure but won't they try and execute me if they know it's me, asked Naruto. Then we will disguise ourselves so no one knows who we are, said Q. Let's do it, said Konohamaru. Okay. They all then followed Q who went back to Naruto's apartment and started to dress them so they would look like a superhero from the mangas that Naruto read. They each had something covering their heads and only their eyes was visible and they all had capes over their body costume. Ready, Q asked. They all nodded then she undid a scroll and gave them a bag to tie around their waist which had different color paint in it. They ran out of the apartment and made sure that no one was around then split up and started to put paint on everything. Naruto ran around painting giant letters on everything that he ran past. He stopped in front of the Hokage's tower and looked at the Junin that was coming out. A purpled hair Anbu was standing on the building across from the tower with her partner. As they looked down wondering what would happen. Hey what are you supposed to be doing, asked the Junin. Naruto didn't say anything he just slowly and dramatically pulled out his paint brush then swiftly and quickly painted a giant in on the Junin shirt and threw a paint filled balloon at his face. The ANBUs who was watched burst out laughing. We should follow him to see what else he will do, laughed the purple haired rabbit masked Anbu. You're right that was hilarious, laughed the brown haired tiger Anbu. So they then followed Naruto around from the roofs laughing their heads off. Naruto ran towards the center of Konoha painting every building he came across. He stopped in front of the Yamanaka flower shop just as Ino was walking out. He had his paint brush ready but was conflicted on whether to paint the building or not, he knew Ino worked there and didn't want her to get in trouble. He looked Ino in the eyes who was staring at him then ran off painting the building next to hers leaving her building unpainted. Ino blinked at the figure, was that Naruto, she whispered to herself. Three hours later the two ANBUs walked into the Hokage's office laughing their asses off, Rabbit, Tiger what is going on? asked Tsunade. Naruto, answered Rabbit. What do you mean? asked Tsunade. Look out the window he and a few others painted everything and everyone who Naruto didn't consider a friend, said Tiger. Tsunade looked out the window and couldn't hide her smile. Wow he must have got word of his banishment said Tsunade. Rabbit gasped, how could they banish him, don't they see he is only a child who needs a mother's love, she said. I don't see the problem if he did something that warrants banishment then why try and defend him, said Tiger. Maybe he didn't have you thought of that Tiger, yelled Rabbit. Why are you so upset about it, 
asked Tiger. I never saw you go out of your way to help him, he finished. That's because you don't like him and would have assigned me to a squad on the other side of the village if you saw me do it, said Rabbit. Are you saying you went against my orders and consistently stopped doing your missions to help him? asked Tiger. I never stopped my missions but I did have a shadow clone to follow and protect him whenever he was by himself and wasn't with Anko or Kuranai, said Rabbit. I should have you punished for disobeying my orders, said Tiger. What order you only told me not to stop my missions to help him which I didn't, and if it wasn't for the council or you I would have adopted him a long time ago, said Rabbit. I don't care how you do it you still disobeyed my order, said Tiger. Why do you hate him anyway he is just a kid trying to be a ninja, asked Rabbit. Both of you shut up I don't want to hear this right now, and Tiger you are dismissed. Rabbit you stay, said Tsunade. Hi, they both said. Tiger then left leaving Rabbit and Tsunade. What do you need me to do Hokage-sama, she asked. I want to know what exactly you mean by you would have adopted him if you wasn't stopped, Tsunade asked. I may not have put the best effort forward but with both Anko and Kuranai I didn't want to interfere with what they was doing to protect him, but I would occasionally slip into his apartment and refill it with food, clean it, make sure his clothes was the right size for his growing body, give him money, and scrolls to learn from. I knew Anko taught him to read so I left him things that he should have learned at the academy and small training scrolls, that would help him learn chakra control and taijutsu and anything else I could do for him, said Rabbit. I see, said Tsunade. Also I tried to adopt him a month after he was born but the council blocked it saying that having a child to take care of would hinder my career as a newly appointed Junin, she said. And how did Tiger stop you, asked Tsunade. I tried to adopt him the year after he joined the academy because I saw how the teachers was treating him but Tiger said if I adopted him I wouldn't have enough money to take care of him and it would strain our relationship, said Rabbit. Really what happened, asked Tsunade. Well I was hurt that he would do that but I weighed the options and painfully decided I could help Naruto from the shadows and still be with Tiger so I decided not to adopt him and stay with Tiger, even though I still helped him as much as I can. I even started to have a shadow clone follow him everywhere he went and if someone tried to hurt him the shadow clone would make itself known and protect him. I even had the clone help Naruto with his taijutsu, said Rabbit. I see well Naruto is being banished he is leaving tomorrow and he already looks at me as a motherly figure so what will you do, asked Tsunade. Well I'm only 12 years older than him I'm not old enough to be a mother to him. I always saw him as a brother, said Rabbit. So I'm guessing you want to stand and let him be banished, asked Tsunade. I already told you I will always protect him even if I have to do it outside of this village, said Rabbit. Good I want you to follow him in the shadows until I meet him I have a few things to take care of in the village before me and my apprentices leave said Tsunade. Okay when do he leave? asked Rabbit. Tomorrow morning. Here is a storage scroll it's double the size of the Anbu storage scroll make sure you bring all the stuff you're going to need because we are not coming back, said Tsunade. I'll be waiting for him outside the gate, said Rabbit. Rabbit give me your mask you're not going to need it anymore I'm retiring you from the Anbu, said Tsunade. She took off her mask and handed it over, I'm going to miss that mask it helped a lot when I didn't want to listen to Tiger I was able to let my eyes wander without being caught, she said. Don't worry Yugo you won't have to listen to his boring stories about being the best swordsman in Konoha, said Tsunade. That's good, but I am sad at how he treats Naruto-kun, said Yugo. I know you would have been good for him but he let his stupidness about Naruto ruin his judgment and made him jealous of losing you to Naruto said Tsunade. Yugo laughed, it's not like I was going to marry Naruto-kun, said Yugo. Yeah I know, said Tsunade. Or not yet anyway since I get to actually spend time with him now if you want I would be willing to marry him, said Yugo. Let's not corrupt my son until he is at least Junin level, said Tsunade. I want I'm going to get packed, I have some things to get from the Anbu HQ that will help us on our departure. I'll make sure I grab extra just in case we have more followers who want to join us, said Yugo. Good idea because eventually Ino will join us maybe not now but in a few months she will leave Konoha and join us, said Tsunade as Yugo left. Naruto and Q was sitting in his living room of his apartment. Naruto was thinking about what happened with Ino. Q can I ask you something, he said. Sure Naru-kun you can always ask me anything, said Q. Why is it when I think of Ino or Hinata I get this weird feelings they're different than before like if something happened to them I would be losing a part of me, asked Naruto. 
You're in love with them, said Q. What how can I be in love with them ain't it wrong to love two girls this much, asked Naruto. No Naruto let me tell you something. You have my Yuko running through your system and it makes your feelings for people stronger. And when you find someone who you like more than usual your feelings for them will be confused until you can figure it out. But I can tell you now from the way you are thinking about the two of them that you are in love, said Q. So I'm in love what do I do, asked Naruto. Don't ask me I'm not a human remember. I don't have human emotions but I do know that my Yuko is influencing who you fall in love with as if it's approving or disapproving of the girl. And if you find someone who my Yuko approves of you should do everything you can to tell that person how you feel, because more times than not they will love you back, said Q. So it's like a guide in the right direction, asked Naruto. Exactly, but it's late and all the stores are closed now. Make a few shadow clones and we will send them to start the pranks while me and you go shopping, said Q. Shopping all the stores are closed how are we going to get in them, asked Naruto. Leave that to me, let's go we only have a few hours before the village alarm system activate and make it almost impossible for you to even leave your apartment without Anbu being on your tail, said Q. Okay I'm ready what do I need, asked Naruto. Just bring all the small storage scrolls you have and the scroll Tsunade gave you we are going to put the stuff we get in the small scrolls before we put them into the large scroll, said Q. They jumped out the window and headed towards the closest store that sold shinobi clothes. Wait Q this store is owned by Tent and Father, said Naruto. Okay, said Q. Let's not go in there because Tenten was nice to me and she was helpful when I asked her to train with me, said Naruto. Fine we will go to the second largest shinobi store, the one that only ANBUs are allowed in, said Q. Then went across the village and Q checked to make sure that no one was in the store or around so they could get in. After confirming the coast was clear she grabbed Naruto and used a demonic jutsu to get inside the store. They walked around looking at the different weapons and clothes. Q what should we get? asked Naruto. First we both need new clothes. Pick a color that's not orange, she told him. What about the colors that my mother and father wore? he asked. From what I was told that's a good choice your mother wore red and your father wore white, she said. So that's where I got orange from, it's the middle of my parents' colors, said Naruto. Him that could work, but we have to make the orange darker, you can get a month worth of outfits in dark orange, said Q. So I can still wear orange, Naruto asked. As long as it's not noticeable you can't, she answered. Naruto pulled up two shirts one is dark orange almost dark red and the other was light orange almost white. How about these two shades of orange, he asked. Those are fine they are not too bright, she said. Okay I'll get 15 outfits in each color, said Naruto. Okay I'll be right back I'm going to the Kunoichi section, said Q. Q walked away and was looking at the other color of clothes and saw something in a lavender color which reminded her of Hinata. She then got a few outfits in different shades lavender for Hinata. She then continued to get herself some clothes in black and red. She was walking past the weapons picking up some kunais, shurikens, and senbons. She was looking at the other weapons and saw the katanas and thought that they was too normal to other ninjas and started to look for something else that would match Naruto's personality and stand out from all other weapons. She then walked past two katana handles, basically a lightsaber from Star Wars. She looked at them and read the directions of them. This weapon is called Elementals. It allows the user to channel their chakra through it and create any weapon they want and as long as they have the chakra to support the weapon it is indestructible. Not normally used because of the user having to master the weapon they chose to use but when used it is almost impossible to defend because the user can change the weapon at any moment. She looked at both of them then picked them up and put them in the weapon scroll. Q I'm done I have enough clothes to last for a full month I also have a pair of sandals like Arrow Senin and a black anbu undercover robe, he said. Really go grab a few more of those robes we might need them, she said. Naruto did as told and they was about to leave when Naruto stopped her. Look at that it looks exactly like that cloak that my father wore, said Naruto. Kayubi looked at it, it does don't it, you should take it, she said. Right, Naruto walked up to the cloak and grabbed it and put it on, it's too big, he said. No Naruto clothes like that you have to channel chakra to make it fit you, she said. He did as told and the size shrank so it fit around him as if made for him, they have a lavender one. I'm going to give it to Hinata as a thank you and a sorry for everything, he said. That's a good idea, said Q. He grabbed the cloak then walked over to Q, what next, he asked. 
to the Shinobi Library, she said. Cool but don't they have cameras there, asked Naruto. They don't have cameras in the library who would think to steal from a library Naruto, asked Q. I guess you're right, said Naruto as they jumped across the village to the library. They reached the library and Naruto was able to squeeze through the small window that was left open above the back door then opened the door for Kayubi. The scrolls in here should be sorted by element and rank. Take a scroll and put a copy of every scroll in it but only keep like elements in each scroll, she told him. Later that day Q shook Naruto to wake him up since they would be leaving soon. He went to shower and put on his regular orange clothes since Q told him he couldn't wear his new stuff until they was out of the village. Hey Q how are we going to give Hinata her gift, asked Naruto. Don't worry we will give it to her later, Q answered. You sure we will be able to, he asked. Trust me Naruto, she said. Okay. Hey I'm hungry. He walked into the kitchen. Q was you able to catch the person who keeps putting food and money in my apartment when I was asleep, he asked. No Naruto we was not here when it happened, she said. Well I wish I knew who it was so I could thank them for all the times they have helped me when I didn't have any food, he said. I have a feeling you will be able to see this person soon, said Q. I also wish I could see Rabbit Chan before I had to leave I like her, said Naruto. You don't even know her how can you know you truly like her, asked Q. Because she went out of her way to help me, she helped with my training when Kurunai or Anko couldn't, she was there to talk to me when no one else would, and she stopped a lot of people from bullying on me, said Naruto. Maybe you will see her, said Q. I hope so, said Naruto. An hour later Kayubi left and was to meet up with Naruto a few miles away from Konoha with the large scroll they sealed everything they took sealed in it. Naruto was at the gate he was supposed to meet Tsunade at. There with her was Shizune, Kurunai, Sume, Hana, and Anko. He walked up to them trying not to look too sad, morning everyone, he said. I'm going to miss you pup, said Sume. Don't worry Nissan we will not let you travel by yourself for long trust your own and I will join you real soon, said Shizune hugging him. I wish I could stay with you, he told Shizune while he hugged her back. Naruto you're like a brother to me also and no I will not let this go without doing something about it, said Kurunai hugging him. Thank you for everything Kurunai Onesen, he said. Naruto, Hana said getting down to his level. Know that I'm always here for you and I will not be marring that Uchiha. Soon when I get everything settled out with figuring if I want to become clan head or not I will let you know. And so you know I will be in line to marry you when you're ready. She told him in his ear so no one can hear. I love you Naruto-kun. She then kissed him. Naruto smiled. Thank you Hana-chan I would be honored to marry someone as strong and beautiful as you. He said back into her ear. Uzumaki Naruto. Tsunade said trying to hide her pain of having to do this. You are hereby banished from Konoha until the Hokage and Council deem you are fit come back. Please remove your Hite 8, she said. Naruto held back a tear and removed his Hite 8 and gave it to her. She bent down to his level. Don't worry son I will be joining you soon. She whispered then took the Hite 8. By Kasen, he whispered. Anko you are to escort Uzumaki Naruto out of fire country, Tsunade said. Right let's go Gaki, she said. Okay. Naruto then followed Anko out of the village. He looked back and saw Tsunade wipe her hand across her eyes. He turned and tried not to cry. Chin up Gaki don't let those old bastards get to you, said Anko. But they took everything away from me just because they don't like me, took me from my cousin who I only had for a few days, he said. Look Naruto not everyone agrees with what the council decided but we can't just stand up and go against them, said Anko. That's the same thing Ino said, replied Naruto. She was right Naruto you know I won't do anything to hurt you. You're like a brother to me. Maybe one day we will be more, said Anko. What do you mean, asked Naruto. We will approach that bridge in a few years when you're older, but no I'm not here to escort you I'm your protection for now, said Anko. Huh, asked Naruto. Look you have the Kayubi sealed in you and I am Orochimaru's ex-student if they are willing to banish you for something that happened when you was born what do you think they will do to me when Orochimaru attacks the village again, said Anko. I guess they will blame it on you since I'm not there, said Naruto. Exactly that's why I took this chance to leave with you so at least we will have each other's company, said Anko. You're right I'm looking at this the wrong way this way I actually have someone who wants to train me and help me when I need it, said Naruto. Exactly, said Anko. They walked a few more miles not noticing Yugo who was following them from the shadows. 
As they walked they was stopped by Itachi and Kisame. Anko cursed under her breath. You two wouldn't let us walk past and act like you didn't see us would you? She asked. Anko we have no problem with you step aside and let us take Naruto, said Itachi. I'm sorry I can't do that, she said. Can I kill her, said Kisame. Knock yourself out, said Itachi. That would do us a great favor if he knocked himself out, said Naruto. Shut it brat you're coming with us once I handle your guard, said Kisame as he attacked Anko. She pulled out a kanai and blocked his samahata. Itachi watched them for a while then turned towards Naruto and started to walk towards him. Yugo dropped down in front of Naruto, hold it Itachi, she said. Who are you? asked Itachi. That don't matter if you want Naruto you're going through me, she said. Itachi looked and assessed the situation. Kisame was in a dead even battle with Anko and he noticed someone coming up on them fast and they seemed powerful. Kisame we are leaving, he said. What I'm having so much fun, Kisame replied. Kisame if this continues she will kill you and with this newcomer and someone powerful is advancing on us as we speak we have no chance of winning, Itachi said. Fine we will finish this another day Anko, Kisame said. Sorry you're not my type so there won't be a second date, Anko said. Why you, said Kisame. Leave it alone she's being sarcastic Kisame let's go, said Itachi then he vanished from sight followed by Kisame. Naruto are you okay? asked Anko walking over and bending down next to him. Yes I'm fine thanks to her, Naruto said. Who are you? he asked her. Don't worry Naruto I wouldn't expect you to know me, but I'm rabbit I used to look after you and train with you until Anko and Kurenai started to do it, said Yugo. That was you, he asked. Yes, I'm also the one who cleaned your apartment, put food in it, and left you with money, she said. You have no idea how much that helped me I would have died of hunger without that, he said. No need to thank me but we need to get going, she said. They started walking and walked into Q who was headed towards them. Q guess what rabbit was Yugo and she is the one who left me food and money, Naruto said. Really told you that you would meet her soon. But are you okay Naruto I sensed Itachi and his flunky and came as fast as I could without using my demonic chakra to draw attention to myself, she said. I'm fine thanks to Anko and Yugo they scared them away and they must have sensed you and didn't know who it was, said Naruto. That's good but you need to get out of those horrid clothes here, she went into her pocket and pulled out the scroll and summoned the clothes scroll and gave it to Naruto, go behind that tree and change, she told him. He took the scroll and went behind the tree. You got him to change his outfit, asked Danko. Well I told him he would be respected more if he didn't wear such a bright color, Q said. Well everyone wants to be respected, said Yugo. Naruto came out from the tree he changed behind wearing his light orange clothes with his cloak over top and his wooden sandals on his feet, so how do I look, he asked. I must say Naruto you look even more like your father now, said Q. You're so handsome, said Yugo. I would date you, said Anko. Yugo looked at her. What I would and you can't say you wouldn't if he was two or three years older, said Anko. Yugo sighed. I try not to think of that right now since he is not old enough right now, she said. I guess anyway let's go we need to get to the meetup spot, said Anko. Right, said Yugo. By midday Anko and Yugo had led them to a small hut that was a few hours, even for a ninja, away from Konoha and went inside. Yugo lit a fire on the fireplace while she sent Naruto to get more firewood. Anko sat back and started to go through her scroll for something to do. She brought out some cards and she, Q, and Yugo started playing poker. When Naruto came back in he sat down in the only other seat at the table and asked how to play. After teaching him how to play he never lost. Eventually Anko, Yugo, and Q was sitting in their chairs with only their panties on since they decided to play strip poker to make it more fun. Tsunade, Shizune, Hinata, and Kurunai walked into the hut and saw Q, Yugo, and Anko naked standing over Naruto who was passed out from the loss of blood. Hinata, eeped, and turned red then fainted. Anko, Yugo, and Q turned and saw the others. Hello Naruto fainted of blood loss, said Q. I can see that. Why are you three naked? asked Tsunade. The Gaki is a poker genius he hasn't lost besides the first game. Well we all lost and since we was playing strip poker here we are, said Anko. Well can you get dressed it wouldn't do for my apprentice to faint again because you're naked, said Tsunade. Right, they all got dressed. When they finished Naruto finally came to, what happened? he asked. 
You fainted, said Yugo. Naruto blushed. Oh right, he said. What are you all doing here? He asked seeing Tsunade and her group. You didn't think I would let my son travel the world without me did you? Asked Tsunade. I'm here because you're my old tuto, said Shizune. Same for me, said Kuranai. Hinata is my apprentice also you're now Jiraiya's official apprentice and don't have to worry about being banished I made a few laws to aid you although you still can't go to Konoha they can't send anyone to kill you, Tsunade said. Hinata finally woke up. Ow, my head hurt, she said rubbing the spot she hit when she fell back. Hinata finally we all need to talk, said Tsunade. First I have something for Hinata, Naruto said getting the scroll he put it in and gave it to her. This is my way of thanking you for everything and saying I'm sorry, he said. Hinata looked at him noticing his different clothes. Naruto-kun you look handsome, she said with a stutter. Hinata what did I tell you about that, said Tsunade. Sorry I'm working on it, she said. That's all I ask but Naruto you do look nice why the change, asked Tsunade. Q said I should change my way of carrying myself if I want to get respected and it starts with wearing respectable clothes and I got this cloak because it looks like the one my father wears, he said. Naruto I'm proud that you are trying to better yourself and looking at the positives, said Shizune. Ino told me I should look at the positives instead of the negatives and I will have better results, he admitted. She was right Naruto, now Hanada what did he get you, asked Kuranai. Hinata opened the scroll and put a little chakra into it to get the gift. She pulled out a lavender cloak like Naruto's and another scroll that was labeled, clothes for Hinata, Naruto-kun, thanks so much, she said hugging him. She pulled back and put the cloak on, push your chakra into the cloak, Q said. The cloak then fitted her as if made for her. Naruto that was a great gift, said Kuranai. Now let's go over what everyone have, said Tsunade. I'll go first, said Anko. I have a copy of all the elemental scrolls that was available at the Junin library, and everything I own, she said. Me and Naruto have a month's worth of clothes each. We also got Hinata a month's worth of clothes that we thought she would like, a few hundred kunais, shurikens, and senbons. We also raided the shinobi library, said Q. You raided the library, and where did you get the weapons from, asked Tsunade. The Anbu store since he didn't want to raid the store owned by Tenten's family, said Q. I knew scheduling myself to watch the store last night was a good idea, said Yugo. Also I have an Anbu mask for everyone here and a few extra just in case so when we go on missions and don't want anyone to see our face we can be covered. I also have a copy of all the scrolls from the Anbu library, and everything I own, Yugo said. I have everything I own, I also have the scrolls from the Uchiha compound, said Kuranai. How did you get in there, asked Shizune. Well it wasn't hard all I did was get Sasuke's permission to get him a few scrolls so he can start to train even though he was still in the hospital, said Kuranai. You never went back to see him did you, asked Danko. Nope didn't need to I got what I needed from him and that was his consent to enter the Uchiha compound, Kuranai said. Well I have every scroll from the Namikaze and Senji compound plus everything I own, said Shizun. I have a copy of every scroll from the Serutobi compound Curiosity of Konohamaru and Asuma. I also have a copy of every scroll from the Hokage's library and everything I own, said Tsunade. Well I have a copy of the scrolls from the Hyuga main family library although they all are on the Jukin and Hyuga attacks. I also have a few pictures, and all my mother's belongings. I don't know if it's useful but I also was able to get this box that was hidden under my father's desk in his office. It has the name Kashina on it but I didn't know who that was, but I took it because it was in my mother's writing, Hinata said. Let me see that box Hinata Kashina is Naruto's mother, why would Hiyashi have something with her name on it, said Tsunade. Taking the box from Hinata and opening it, there was a letter in it so she read it out loud, Hana if you're reading this then something happened during my labor and I didn't make it. I want you to take care of my son. I know your husband don't like me but he is friends with Minato and if he is doing what I think he is going to do to stop Kayubi then we both will end up dead and you're the only one in the village I trust to take care of him. I know the third will try and take care of him but he has a history of making the wrong decisions or letting his counsel sway his decisions and I don't want Naruto's fate to be in their hands. In this box is a scroll to all my jutsus that I own, it can only be opened by my son so even if the council finds it they can't do anything. I know it might be soon but I want you to teach Naruto my jutsus as soon as he starts the academy so when he become a genin he will have a good library of jutsus memorized. 
Please take good care of my son Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze your friend Kashina. She looked up at Naruto and he was crying silently. Naruto you can start learning these jutsus whenever you want, she said. Okay Kasen, he stuttered. Let's get off this subject it's hard for Naruto, said Shizune, as the newly appointed Chunin was crying. Anything else in the box? asked Shizune. Yay a few pictures, said Tsunade. She pulled out the first one which had Hana standing in an open field with Hinata on her shoulders. The second had Kashina, Minato, and Naruto in the hospital room. She gave the pictures to the two. All that's left are two jutsu scrolls one from Kashina and one from Hana, said Tsunade. I think we should get moving since it would get their minds off what they were just told, said Q. Yes you're right, said Tsunade. Here are your masks, said Yugo pulling out seven masks. Hinata grabbed a cat. Naruto grabbed a toad. Q grabbed a fox. Shizune grabbed a sparrow. Tsunade grabbed a slug. Kurinai grabbed a lion. Enko grabbed a snake. Yugo kept the bear. Okay whenever we travel if we are between towns we will wear these clothes and no matter where we go we will go by our animal names, said Tsunade. Why? asked Naruto. If you go around calling yourself Naruto you will be easier to track, but if you go by an alias it's harder to find you, said Tsunade. Okay so I'm Toad, he said. I'm a fox and I'm being called Fox because of my mask how ironic, said Q. We can switch if you want to, said Hinata. You sure, asked Q. Yes I don't mind going by the name Fox, she answered. Okay, I'm now Cat, said Q. Is everyone else satisfied with their mask, asked Tsunade. They all said yes, good let's go somewhere so we can make a little money, she said. You're not going gamble, said Shizune. Why not if Naruto is as good as they say he should be able to win back what I lose, I haven't been able to gamble in a few months at least let me do it once, said Tsunade. Later, said Shizune. Fine where are we going, asked Tsunade. Maybe we should look for some of Orochimaru's old hideouts that he have around here, never know what we will find that we could use, said Anko. Why would we go looking for his hideouts wouldn't that cause us more trouble, asked Hinata. Usually but not since he messed up our lives we will mess up his by destroying every hideout we find that belong to him, said Tsunade. Okay the first one is near Wave, said Anko. How do you know that, asked Naruto. He used to be my sensei, that's where he took me when he gave me this curse mark, said Anko. Okay we will head to Wave, but we still need a schedule for them, said Tsunade. I'll train Hinata in Taijutsu at noon, said Anko. All the two in using a katana, speed, strength, and stamina starting at 6 in the morning until 10 inches said Yugo. I'll train them in medics and teamwork, said Tsunade. I'll do Ginjutsus, said Kuranai. I'll start them on their element training, said Q. I guess I'm stuck with strategies, practical stuff, and teaching Naruto Taijutsu, said Shizune. After traveling at full speed for a few hours they finally reached the border of wave country and fire country. First before we continue I have something for Hinata and Naruto, Tsunade said pulling out a scroll. She unsealed it and gave the two a black chunin vest. They was green but I had them modified so that no one would associate us with Konoha, she told them. By modified she means she had me dye them and take the swirl off them, corrected Shizun. Did you have to tell them that? asked Tsunade. Shizune just shrugged. Is this real? asked Naruto. Yup as real as it gets gaki, said Tsunade. So we are chunins, he asked. Very much so, now stop gawking and put it on we have to get going before Donzo's route catches up with us, Tsunade said. Okay. Wait Nichan can you remove the sleeves on my coat, asked Naruto. Sure but why, asked Shizune. Because it would be easier for me to move my arms if they wasn't restricted by the sleeves of my coat, said Naruto. Okay, give me your coat I'll have it modified in a few minutes, said Shizune. Hinata while this is being done I need you to sign the snake contract, said Anko. Okay Anko, said Hinata. Done Naruto, Shizune handed him back his sleeveless cloak. He grabbed it and put it on over his chunin vest he how wore proudly over his orange t-shirt. Wow Naruto you look great now with the vest and sleeveless cloak, said Shizune. Okay Anko where is this hideout, asked Tsunade. Follow me, said Anko. In Konoha, Jiraiya was sitting in the Hokage's office. He sighed as he looked over the decrees that Tsunade made. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby appoint Hayuga Hinata, Uzumaki Naruto the rank Chunin. 
As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby appoint Hinata Hyuga my new apprentice. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby appoint Naruto Uzumaki apprentice of Senen Jiraiya. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby declare Hyuga Hinata, Uzumaki Naruto, Shizun, and I, Tsunade Senji be released from any and all obligations and are now free from all ties to Konoha. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby release the Junins Mitarashi Anko and Yuhi Kuranai from all duties and ties to Konoha. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby release Enbu Azuki Yugo from all ties and duties to Konoha. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that the property of Minato Namikaze be placed under my name. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby remove all monies belonging to the Senji name and Namikaze from the banks. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby place Jiraiya of the Senin as my successor the sixth Hokage. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that no ninja may follow me without my permission on punishment of death. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby freeze all bank accounts for the next three months. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Hitaki Kakashi is banned from reading any porn and is required to teach all genins in ninjutsu. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Uchiha Sasuke is to remain under Anbu surveillance for the rest of his days. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Uchiha Sasuke is banned from having more than six kids. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Uchiha Sasuke is not to have a hand in raising any kids that he birthed. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that the caged bird seal is banned for use on any persons and any person who have it will be option to have it removed. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Haruno Sakura be sent to a Yamanaka for mental examination. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that Haruno Sakura be held in Anbu prison for two months for assault on Ninja of the Leaf. As the fifth Hokage, I, Tsunade Senji hereby decree that all ANS rank missions be suspended for the next six months. He sighed, this is going to be a headache but fun, he thought. There was a knock on the door, come in, he said. Ino walked into the office, how can I help you Ino, he asked. I was given this order by Tsunade to have the doctors at the hospital teach me medics but so far everyone has refused to teach me, she said. I see let's go to the hospital then, he said. They walked into the hospital. Hello who is the doctor in charge here today, asked Jiraiya. Well I am sir, said a doctor walking up to them. Well why has no doctor started to train Ino in medics, asked Jiraiya. Because the third made it so we don't have to if we don't want to, said the doctor. Do you like your job? asked Jiraiya. The doctor nodded. Well get to training Ino or you will not only lose it but I will put you up on charges of treason, said Jiraiya. Right come on Ms. Yamanaka, do you have good chakra control? asked the doctor. Thank you Jiraiya. Yes I have great control. The second largest chakra reserve of all the genin kunoichis to only Hinata, she said proudly. Great, said the doctor. Jiraiya sighed. I'm going to have to watch to make sure she is being taught right, he thought then he made a clone and sent it to spy on their training to make sure she was being taught right. Sakura was sitting in the room with Sasuke thinking over everything that happened. She was told she would be able to marry Sasuke if she wanted, and have his children. She thought this was the greatest thing to happen to her since she became a genin. She started to get hungry and got up and left, she saw Ino walking with a doctor and ran to join her, hey Ino hold up she called out. Hi Sakura, said Ino. I was wondering if you were going to marry Sasuke, said Sakura. No I don't want to, I used to like him just as you did but after recent events showed me his true colors I don't want anything to do with him, said Ino. But you always wanted to be with him, said Sakura. I know Sakura but people change I saw what his actions caused my friends, our friends, and I decided I can't be with someone who would cause so many to be injured just for personal revenge, said Ino. I see, I confused I don't know what to do I might have ruined my friendship with the one person besides you who actually was nice to me all because of I like Sasuke, said Sakura. 
I heard about what happened with you and Naruto and I must say I am disappointed but I think if you try hard enough he will forgive you and become your friend again but only if you step up and admit to everyone that you was wrong, said Ino. Thank you Ino you always knew how to make me feel better, said Sakura. What kind of best friend would I be if I couldn't make my best friend feel better, do you want my opinion on what you should do, asked Ino. Yes, said Sakura. Go find Jiraiya and apologize to him for how you treated Naruto and do everything you can to let him know you're trying your best to change yourself for the better and he might find someone to train you, said Ino. Thanks I'll do that now, I'll come by your shop later and tell you how it went, said Sakura. Okay bye I have to get going I have training, said Ino as she ran to catch up with the doctor. Sakura ran out the hospital to find Jiraiya. She looked everywhere, he wasn't even in the Hokage tower where he was supposed to be. She gave up and started to walk home as she passed the bathhouse she heard a giggle. She went to check it out and saw Jiraiya peeping in on the bathhouse. Excuse me you shouldn't be doing that, she said. Jiraiya looked over at her. What do you want Haruno, he asked. I want to talk to you about how I treated Naruto, she said. Why should I listen to anything you have to say, he asked. Because if you at least listen to what I have to say I won't yell out so everyone in the bathhouse knows you're peeping on them, said Sakura. Fine but if I listen to you, it better be good, he said. Agreed, said Sakura. Okay begin, said Jiraiya. I'm sorry for how I treated Naruto and I want to at least get the chance to make up for my mistakes. I was influenced by how I felt about Sasuke and when he was in the hospital I didn't stop to think everything through I just acted and it was stupid I know but if given the chance I will do everything in my power to make up for it. Naruto is the only person besides Ino who is my age and treats my fairly and I took it for granted and now I have completely lost the friendship I had with him. I at least want him to know I'm trying to change myself for the better and maybe one day I can do something to make his life a little easier, she said. Hmm. Well if you let me take a picture of you nude I'll set you on the right track to being forgiven, said Jiraiya. Sakura's eyes widened and she covered herself with her arms. There has to be another way, she said shaking her head. It was worth a try, I'll think of something, tomorrow go to your regular training area at 10 in the morning and I'll send you a sensei to train you, said Jiraiya. Thank you Jiraiya, she said. Just get going I have work to do, said Jiraiya then he went back to peeping. Sakura left Jiraiya with high hopes of redeeming herself, she already apologized to Ino and Jiraiya. Next she had to find, Choji, Shikamaru, Kiba, Shino, and Lee they would be the easy ones the one she wasn't looking for talking to was Tenten who developed an older sister bond with Naruto. She also figured she should at least try and be friends with Neji since he was Hinata's cousin and he would need his help to convince Hinata that she was a changed person. Sakura was walking and ran into the one person she didn't want to, Tenten. Tenten looked at Sakura as if she was deciding to kill her slow or quick. Sakura gulped and slowly put some space between the two. She knew if Tenten decided to fight her it would be nothing she could do to defend herself so she was preparing herself to run. Um Tenten before you decide to kill me at least hear me out. Sakura stuttered badly. Tenten did a Neji-like smirk and looked at her. Why should I after what you did to my brother, she asked. I know I was a bad friend and teammate but after having the chance to think about my actions I realized how terrible I was to him and I want to change, she said. So just like that you think you can up and change, asked Tenten. Well I know it won't be easy but I will try my hardest, said Sakura. So you want to make friends with me is that right, asked Tenten. Yes, Sakura said, and what of the damn traitor Uchiha, asked Tenten. He is not a traitor he was being controlled by that seal, said Sakura. Sakura until you forget about that Uchiha we will never be friends and you will always be my enemy as long as you try to protect him. So until the time you realize that the damn spoiled bastard truly is don't cross me or you might end up in the hospital, said Tenten. But, she was cut off. Change as much as you want but until you let go of this silly fangirl ways you have for him you will still be the same Sakura not only to me but to Hinata and Naruto and no matter how much you change if that's all we see as your crush on the Uchiha then it won't matter, said Tenten. She then walked away. Sakura sighed, I knew it would be hard. But I didn't think she would be this hard to become friends with, she said to herself. Sakura, she turned around and saw Guy, Lee and Neji standing there looking at her. Yes, she said, 
I know you're trying to change and it's hard after so long of believing one thing but you should really consider what Tenten said because Naruto holds her opinion on a higher level than any other genin he knows and if she doesn't like you then the chances of either Hinata or Naruto liking you is small. Of course you won't get over the Uchiha right away and Tenten knows that she is giving you a chance to make up for your comment you just made. And trust me when Tenten doesn't cut you for something you say then you are on a really short string and if you do the wrong thing eh? Chances of changing her mind is lost, said Neji. I don't know Naruto as well as you but I know he is forgiving but if Hinata and Tenten don't forgive you then he probably won't, said Guy. Come on Sakura you should spend your time training to clear your head then come back to this subject when your mind is clear and make a decision, said Lee. Training with this will also let Tenten see how hard you're trying to change, said Neji. I would like to but I can't Jiraiya Sama already said he would get me a sensei to train me, she said. You won't be training with your new sensei all day, when you're finished with your sensei come find us for extra training you won't change unless you work harder than you did before, said Guy. Thank you I will come train with you after I'm done with my sensei tomorrow, she said. A kanai came flying past and smoothly slid across Sakura's jaw then Tenten walked up with another kanai and her hand pointed at Sakura. The next kanai won't miss now you only have one chance and one chance only to change my opinion about you so you better make it cunt or all hopes of becoming my brother's friend it lost do I make myself clear, said Tenten. Yes Tenten, said Sakura. Good don't be late for training tomorrow we start team training at 4 in the afternoon. She then walked away and disappeared in the trees headed towards the village. Told you she was hard to impress, said Neji. I think I better leave before she changes her mind, said Sakura. On her way home she found the guys at a restaurant and went to apologize to them which were easy because she agreed to pay for their food, which was a lot with how Choji ate. She was walking home and saw a Hayuga girl walking with a guard and went up to them. Hey you're Hinata's sister aren't you? asked Sakura. Why does it matter she no longer lives in the Hayuga compound, said Hanabi. I was wonder could I ask you something about her, said Sakura. Sure make it quick I'm busy, said Hanabi. Sakura wondered how busy an 8 year old could be but shrugged it off. If someone was trying to make up to her for how they acted what would you recommend they do, asked Sakura. Well I'm guess this has something to do with that Naruto boy she has a crush on, Sakura nodded. Well I would suggest you talk to her and let her know how wrong you was. And get her some cinnamon buns they're her favorite and she doesn't hold grudges longer than 5 minutes, said Hanabi. Thank you, now all I have to do is write a letter for Hinata and send her some cinnamon buns to explain why I did what I did, Sakura said. No worries now I have to go, but will you send this letter to her with yours, asked Hanabi and she gave Sakura the letter then continued to look for Neji. Sakura ran to the nearest cinnamon bun store and asked for a simple recipe to make some cinnamon buns. She got home with her newly acquired recipe and started to make two dozen for Hinata. Sakura was standing in the middle of training ground 7. She didn't get much sleep because she spent most of the night thinking over how she treated Naruto, she had made a promise that she would change herself and this was the beginning of that change. She looked at her watch and saw it was already 10.05 and wondered where her sensei was. She hoped it wasn't going to be Kakashi because he was always late and she would get no training done. Sorry I'm late Sakura I was in a meeting with the Hokage, Kakashi said walking up to her. What you are my sensei, she asked. Yes, now enough talk we have a lot to cover now get stretched out. We are going to first put some weights on your limbs then work on your taijutsu. You're going to learn the strong fist taijutsu. Also you're going to learn cage bushin to make your training go twice as fast, Kakashi said. Right. Sakura stretched out then put the weights on he gave her. Sensei these are heavy, she said. That's the point, these are old weights that Lee started off using, Kakashi said. After Kakashi taught Sakura cage bushin and they both had one clone he went to teaching her taijutsu with the clone. The originals worked on increasing her stamina and chakra. They continued this for two hours then had a break for lunch where Kakashi told her to dispel the clone to get the information that it learned. Sakura closed her eyes as the information rushed back to her then opened them after she processed everything. Good now you know everything the clone learned we are going to perfect it, Kakashi said. What now, Sakura asked. No after our 30 minute break we will, Kakashi said. Oh, Sakura said. At 3 Kakashi dismissed from training and told her to be back here at 6 in the morning so they can get more training done. Sakura dragged herself home and showered then ate and rested.
Her alarm woke her up at 3.50 giving her enough time to training round 10 for training with team guy. She put on her regular clothes then looked in the mirror and decided she needed a complete change and took out the box of ninja clothes her mother bought her when she became a genin. She took out a pair of red tight pants and a shirt that also fit tight to her form, but they was comfortable for her. She also put up some ninja boots. She looked on her wall of fake weapons that she had from when she was a kid and pulled off a giant sharp ninja ring and sealed it in the only ceiling scroll that she had. She would ask Tenton if her shop sold anything like that later. She ran to the training ground barely making it in time. She walked up to them, sorry I decided to change my wardrobe also, she said. We can see, now this week is weapons training meaning I'm your opponent this entire week and you will only use weapons. Lucky for you I'm providing them, Tenton said. Hold on Sakura you looked slower are you wearing weights, Guy asked. Yes Kakashi sensei gave me a pair, she said. That's why he bought those weights for me, Guy said. Well lucky for you I just increased my weights now let's go, Tenton said. Wait you wear weights, since when, Guy asked. For about a year, Tenton replied. Danzo, Homura, and Kaharu walked into the Hokage's office. What the hell are these? Homura demanded waving a scroll around. Um, it looks like a scroll to me, Jiraiya said. He means the decrees that Tsunade wrote, Danzo said. Well there you go there decrees if you know that why do you need me to tell you what they are, Jiraiya asked. We will not allow these decrees to go through, Kaharu said. You can't stop them, unless of course you want to cause a civil war, Jiraiya said. This ain't over, Homura said as they walked out. Well if that bent them out of shape wait till they see what Tsunade had put in the paper tomorrow. Jiraiya laughed. Sasuke walked through the Uchiha compound, that bitch took all my scrolls, he said to himself. He looked around and walked into the secret room that Itachi had. Inside the room he found a copy of all the clan's jutsus and advanced techniques, well time to train, then either will be no one to stop me from leaving this shithole. He told himself pulling the first jutsu off the shelf. The next morning Jiraiya was walking to his office with his Rokudame hat on his head blocking the morning sun from his eyes. He noticed a newspaper sitting out and grabbed it. He read the headline on the front page, Council banished the Yandaimi's son, he then looked at a picture that was there. It was a baby picture of Naruto and Minato. A picture of Naruto and Minato at age 10. A picture of Minato and Naruto after becoming a genin, and finally a picture of Naruto and Minato at the Chunin exams. He shook his head while laughing, she is really going to screw the council over, he said to himself then walked into his office. As the rest of the village woke up the ninjas grabbed a paper and most grinned at the shitload of problems the council was going to have. The few like most Hayugas and a few others who didn't like Naruto scolded not wanting to know the truth of this. The civilians was in an uproar by the news and was marching to the Hokage's tower. The council, Morsa Danzo, Homura, and Kaharu was demanding this be taken out of the papers. Jiraiya just looked at them and laughed. What is the meaning of this? Letting this reach the public do you know what kind of problems this is going to give us? Kaharu yelled. This won't cause me no problems, Jiraiya said. That's not the point, Homura said. So because you're going to be blamed for banishing their god's son you want me to tell this is not true? Jiraiya asked. Exactly, Homura said. Ain't happening. Now I have things to do now get out, Jiraiya said. You will regret this, Danzo said. Jiraiya pushed a button on his desk. Get me Sume and Hana Inazuka now, he said. Five minutes later the two Inazukas was walking into the office. You wanted us Hokage-sama, Hana asked. I told you not to call me that I hate this damn position but it is fun sometimes, Jiraiya said. I bet I can only imagine how the elder council took the news, Sume laughed. Yay they want me to deny it because it will make them look bad, Jiraiya said. Well they brought this on themselves everyone knows not to cross Tsunade, Sume said. Exactly, but I need you two to go back to the Anbu for the time being. I need someone to keep watch en route, Jiraiya said. Right we will get on that right away, Sume said. Do you still got your masks, Jiraiya asked. Yup Wolf is at home and safe, Hana said. So is Inu, Sume said. Jiraiya looked at her. Both you and Kakashi had Inu, he asked. Yes, but my Inu is more famous as the hunter he focused on Anbu and assassinations, Sume said. Right well tell me if they are doing something suspicious, Jiraiya said. Hi, both vanished from sight. A month later Jiraiya walked up to Sakura as she was just finishing up training with Kakashi, 
Hello how is training going? He asked. Great, she has already learned everything she would have if she had a shinobi family to teach her, Kakashi said. So she is up to genin level, Jiraiya asked. Yes, I was going to start increasing her training now, Kakashi said. Well that will have to wait, she still have her two months in Anbu prison to do, Jiraiya said. What Anbu prison, Sakura yelled. Don't worry, it's actually not as bad as it sounds. You will be given more freedom because you're only a genin level, while there you will be allowed to continue your training but you can only learn from scrolls and you will be under 24 hour watch, Jiraiya said. But prison, Sakura asked again. You should be lucky. Tsunade wanted you to be treated as any other prisoner in Anbu prison, Jiraiya said. How are they treated, Sakura asked. Just be lucky you're not being treated like that, Kakashi told her. When do I start, Sakura asked. Tomorrow, use today as a free day because once you're in prison there is no free days you will have to constantly watch your back, and even though the Anbu are to make sure nothing happens to you, some are not too fond of how you treated Naruto, Jiraiya said. Can I bring anything with me, she asked. Sure, also I will have Inoichi and Ino come every few days to help you with your multiply personalities, Jiraiya said. Multiple personalities, Sakura asked. Ye when Inoichi first examined you it came back that you had two personalities fighting for control of your body, and they are just going to help you get them under control and maybe get rid of one, Jiraiya said. Outside wave. The group had just left the hideout that Orochimaru had, after clearing that nothing in it was usable they placed a few explosive tags in it then blew it up. They next went to the village of Springs, located in Country Hot Springs. After entering they realized why it was called the village of springs as there was hot springs everywhere. The kunoichis of the group immediately went to a hot spring. Naruto just walked around the city looking at the different sites. He walked inside a jewelry store and nodded to the lady behind the counter who nodded back and went back to her magazine. After she finished she watched Naruto for a few minutes, can I help you find something, she asked eventually. Well at the moment I'm just looking, but if you don't mind can I ask you something, he replied. Not at all, after all I get paid to help customers or future customers, she replied. Well you see I'm training to be a ninja and I was kicked out of my home in Konoha and a bunch of friends came with me. But I'm the only guy in the group I want to buy something that shows them how thankful I am for them but I don't have a lot of money, he said. I see, what's your name, she asked. Naruto Uzumaki, he replied. She looked at him, well Naruto, I'm Shiroi and I'm sorry you was kicked out of your home. I also had to leave my home but unlike you I didn't have anyone with me, she replied. Oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to bring up bad memories, he said. Don't worry you didn't know anyway for your problem I think I can help you how much money do you have on you right now, she asked. Naruto pulled out his bunta wallet and started counting his money, I have a few hundred dollars, he told her. How about we make a deal, she said. What kind of deal, he asked. Well you want something to show your thanks. Give me $200 and your friendship since I don't have any and I'll give you a few pieces of scrap jewelry to give to your friends, she said. Deal, but I have six friends with me, he said. That's fine, here are six necklaces that broke sometime between them getting made and being brought here. I'm sure being a ninja you can find a way to fix them, she said. Thanks Shiroi you're the best, he said. You're welcome Naruto, she replied. He then bolted out the door to try and fix them she smiled and shook her head. I can't believe Konoha kicked him out what else happened since I ran away, she thought. She then pulled out another magazine and started to look through it, why do I have a feeling I'm going to have to reveal myself sooner than I wanted, she thought. Naruto ran and found an empty table and went to work on trying to fix the necklaces. He did the best he could seeing as he had no experience at this kind of stuff. After he was done he nodded and sealed them into a scroll and got up and walked around more. A few minutes of walking around he noticed someone was watching him, who's there, he yelled. Naruto you're coming with us, they said. Itachi and Sushi man I'm not going anywhere with you, Naruto said. What makes you think you have a choice, Kisame asked. You can't make me go where I don't want to, Naruto replied. Kisame just go get him, Itachi said bored. Kisame walked closer than swung his samahada but it was blocked before it made it to Naruto. The person who blocked it then kicked Kisame in the stomach. Naruto leave them to me, a female's voice said. You will pay for that, Kisame then ran at her. Her eyes changed, Kisame stopped, Itachi uncharacteristically yelled out. Too late, the kunoichi said then Kisame fell to the ground. In the hot springs Q all of a sudden stood up, 
We have to go Itachi is here, she said. They got dressed and followed Q to where Naruto was to see a Kunoichi fighting Itachi. Itachi activated his Mangekyu Sharingan and looked at the Kunoichi. He then attacked without warning. The Kunoichi blocked his attack and attacked back. Itachi jumped back and saw the rest of Naruto's group come up. He grabbed Kisame and vanished. Naruto are you okay? Q asked as she stopped next to him. Yes she saved me, Naruto said pointing to the Kunoichi. Thank you whoever you are, Tsunade said. No thanks are needed, she said. Who are you? How did you know my name? Naruto asked. She turned around and looked at him. I was just talking to you 15 minutes ago, she said smiling at him. Shish Shiroi, he asked. Exactly now why would Itachi be after you? She asked. Because of Kayubi, Naruto said. I heard of groups doing that but I didn't want to believe it, she said. Excuse me how do you have the Sharingan? They all should be dead, Hinata asked. Well the night Itachi killed them I had just came back from a mission and witnessed the whole thing. I couldn't stay there and ran away. I took a few scrolls and left. I fainted outside this village and when I woke up I had the Sharingan, Shiroi said. So you're related to Sasuke Teme? Naruto asked. She looked at him, unfortunately he is my cousin, but alas not all Uchihas are power crazy like those two brothers, Shiroi said. Well again thank you for saving Naruto we will be leaving now. We don't want to bring more trouble here, Tsunade said. If you don't mind I would like to travel with you, Shiroi said. Why? Tsunade asked. Shiroi shrugged, no reason. I just want more than just staying here also I need to repay Itachi for killing my mother, she wasn't even an Uchiha, Shiroi said. What can you give us and what do you get out of this, Tsunade asked. For one I can fight Itachi last time we spared we was even, for two I know all the Uchiha's jutsus, and finally all I want is someone to call a friend. Being half Uchiha meant I was shunned by all and never had any friends, Shiroi said. You can come with us, but you have to help with training, Tsunade said. Fine with me, I can teach ninjutsu since that's what I excel in, Shiroi said. How was you able to fight Itachi evenly, Yugo asked. Well that's easy since I have a fully developed Sharingan. His don't affect me as it would anyone else and only a Sharingan user can stop his genjutsus he cast, Shiroi said. In Konoha. In Konoha's Anbu prison Sakura was miserable, she didn't get to see Ino for another two days and she still had a month to be in there. She studied her scrolls and did chakra exercises but soon she would just sit on her bed and cry. She wanted to get out of there so bad she was willing to do anything to get out. Occasionally she would get visits from everyone else but they was too far apart for her to survive in there. As she was sitting on her bed her door opened. Hoping that it was someone to talk to she looked over at the door and was not surprised to see an Anbu step in, but unlike the normal tiger Anbu this one was a wolf. She walked in further and stepped aside for, to Sakura's surprise, let Tenten walk into the room. Sakura just stared, Tenten why are you here, she asked nervously. Tenten looked at her, I was told that you were getting more and more miserable being in here and that you was almost raped a few times although I think you should be punished for what you did, I don't think you should have to go through this and even if I don't like you I have to admit you are trying to change so I decided to give you a visit, she said. Sakura just looked at he, thank you, she said. Don't thank me, anyway how are you holding up, Tenten asked. Sakura tried to keep control but eventually burst out in tears. Oh Tenten I know I was bad to him but was I really this bad to him? This place is worse than anything you can ever imagine. The guys here all try to rape me and the women tries to beat me up. All because I'm, the new meat, as they put it, Sakura cried out. Tenten watched as tears poured down her face. She took a deep breath and walked over to her. Sakura don't pay them any mind. You only have a month left. She said while letting Sakura cry on her shoulder. But I can't last another entire month I almost died earlier, she cried out. I thought you're supposed to have Anbu watching you while you was here, Tenten asked. I do but Tiger always wait till the last minute to stop what they're doing. He even let one guy get all the way to ripping my clothes off before he stopped him. All because I'm trying to change myself, Sakura cried. What he let things get that far, Wolf asked who was quiet the entire time. Why yes, HH he said if I just agreed to be with Sasuke he would stop them before they can start, Sakura cried. Why didn't you agree, Wolf asked. Because he is the reason I am having all these problems, when Ino last came she told me that after checking my past with one of her family jutsus I would have been fine and a better Kunoichi if I have never met him, 
I'm trying to be the best I can but he is holding me back, Sakura said. I see I'll try to get the Hokage to put you on house arrest with an Anbu watching you for the rest of your time, Tenton said. Tenton time is up, Wolf told her. Okay, here Sakura it's a scroll on that battle ring you asked me about. Read it and practice the movements best you can. When you get out I'll get you a practice one, Tenton said. Thank you. They both left Sakura to her lonesome again. Wolf shunshined them to the Hokage's office. How is she? Jiraiya asked. She is completely defeated, Wolf said. What do you think? He asked. If she spend her last month in there she will have a mental and physical breakdown and at best will kill herself, Wolf said. At worst, Jiraiya asked. She is raped then killed, Wolf said. What do you suggest? He asked that you put her on house arrest for the next month to give her a chance to recover from what she has been through in the Anbu prison, Wolf. Okay then you have my permission to transport her to her house then put Bear on watch and get back to your original mission, Jiraiya said. Hi, I'll take you home Tenton, Wolf said. Wolf can you help me train in my element, Tenton asked as they walked out the office. Sure meet me in training ground 15 at 6 in the morning, Wolf said. Wolf arrived at the Anbu prison again and went to Sakura's room. She found it empty so she went looking for her. She found her being forced to the ground by a group of guys and got pissed at Tiger just watching. After quickly killing the group she looked at Tiger. What the hell are you doing watching this? She asked. I already told her to give in to Sasuke and I will stop this, he replied. Is that what this is about? You're still mad that Rabbit left you, Wolf said. This has nothing to do with her, Tiger said. Whatever just know this you will be punished for this. Sakura get your things you'll be transported to your house to finish the rest of your time on house arrest, Wolf said. Sakura walked into her house and immediately fell on the couch and went to sleep. Miss Haruno there will be frequent visits from the Anbu to make sure she stays in her house. She is not to leave unless there is a fire or she is being taken somewhere by Anbu. She is not to have any visitors unless they are accompanied by an Anbu and you are not to bring friends over. The only ones allowed in this house are you and your daughter unless an Anbu is here, Wolf said to Sakura's mom. Thank you for bringing her back, I will make sure all your rules are followed, she relied. Also if Tiger tries to come press this button and I will come, Wolf said handing her a pager. Tiger shunshined into the Uchiha compound and quickly found Sasuke training himself, pathetic, he said. What do you want, Sasuke asked. I'm here to give you real training, Tiger said. Well what are you waiting for, Sasuke asked. Patience, I am still having your katana made, but put these on we are going to do some serious speed training, he said throwing him some weights. In the middle of nowhere, the group of ninja for hire who took the name of Jozu, was setting up camp for the night. After they had their tents and had a fire built Shiroi turned to the group. Hey you don't mind if I start training them in speed do you, she asked. Go ahead I was going to do it but if you want then I can focus on weapon, Yugo said. Thanks, she turned to Naruto and Hinata. Here put these on, she gave them a set of weights. After they put them on, now I know usually ninjas always wear weights but you're only wearing them for a set amount of time. This is just to get your speed up to Chunin level. Then we are going to do some serious speed training, the kind only known by Jiraiya, Shiroi said. How do you know training that Jiraiya did, Tsunade asked. Because Jiraiya once visited hot springs and noticed me. He took a few months to train me, during that time my speed increased dramatically and without using weights, she said. He must have put you through the training he put Minato through, Tsunade said. The next morning Shiroi woke Naruto and Hinata as at the crack of dawn and since she had the last watch that was around 6 in the morning. The two tiredly rubbed their eyes while following Shiroi she led them to a small lake and threw them in it. Now since you two are fully awake time for training. And be quiet we don't want everyone else to be woken up do we, she said. You threw us into a lake, Naruto yelled. I said be quiet it's too early to be yelling not get on top of the water, she commanded. After they got out the water she started. Now make at least two clones. They both made a clone, she had to teach it to Hinata though, send them with my clones, they are going to work on ninjutsu while we work on speed. I know it's hard to see but trust me this will is the best time to train, she said. How does that work? Naruto asked. Well whatever your clone learns you learn when it's dispelled, Shiroi said. What I didn't know that, Naruto said. Well now you do. Let's go, Shiroi turned and started to run around the lake. She ran up the waterfall, to which neither Chunin could do. She then jumped off the waterfall. Don't worry I didn't expect you to be able to do that I couldn't do it either when Jiraiya trained me. 
So instead until the rest wake up we are going to work on taijutsu. This is a go all out training so don't hold back Hinata and Naruto no Kayubi chakra, she said. But what if I hurt him, Hinata asked. Don't worry he will have to learn to dodge and the only way is for you not to hold back and if you're holding back you won't get any better, Shiroi said. Hinata gulped, okay bye Kugan, she said. What hey I can barely see, Naruto complained. To bad Naruto sometimes you will be at a disadvantage learn to adapt, Shiroi said. Begin, she told the two. Hinata flew at Naruto and hit his chakra point directly in his stomach. Naruto doubled over in pain. Good Hinata don't give your opponent a chance to adapt to you, Shiroi said. Hinata then kicked Naruto in the face. Naruto flew back and slowly got to his feet. Damn I can't see shit, he thought. Naruto listened to the walking sounds that Hinata was making and swung his fist when they was close enough to which Hinata dodged and sent an open palm up to Naruto's chin putting a small amount of chakra into the blow. Good job Naruto on adapting, Hinata nice control, Shiroi said. After a few minutes Naruto was still getting the shit beat out of him but he was being able to see a little better which he didn't know why. Hinata was sending an open palm to Naruto's face when she stopped. Hinata why did you stop this spar is still going, Shiroi said. Naruto-kun eyes are different, she said. What do you mean, Shiroi asked. They are different no longer blue, Hinata said. Okay we are going back I need to check this out. Naruto can you still not see, Shiroi asked. A little but not much, he said. Hinata grabbed his hand and follow me back to camp, Shiroi said. Hinata blushed the entire time she was holding his hand. They got back to camp and Shiroi directed them to sit which they did. She then went into her tent and pulled out a scroll. Naruto who was your mother, she asked. Uzumaki Kashina and the Yandaimi was my father, he said. Well that's obvious the Yandaimi being your father, Shiroi said as she unsealed more scrolls and started going through them. What's going on, Shizun asked coming out of her tent. Hold on I'll explain if I can find the right scroll, Shiroi said. Right scroll for what, Shizun asked. On Uzumaki Kashina, sometimes merchants would come from different places and sell things one came from Whirlpool saying he was trying to get to Konoha to deliver this scroll to the Hokage but died before he could get there. He asked me to take the scroll, Shiroi said. So why didn't you, Tsunade asked coming out the tent. Actually that was a few days before you all came, Shiroi said. Found it, she started to read the scroll. You know you still haven't told us what you're looking for, Shizun said. I know because I don't know what I'm looking for yet, Shiroi replied. After reading the scroll more and everyone else waking up she closed the scroll, that's no the right one. She then threw it to Naruto, that covers your mother's life in Whirlpool, it was written in her handwriting so I guess she wrote it as a diary, Shiroi said. What the hell, you have been looking at your scrolls for the last hour what the hell are you looking for, Anko said. Found it, Naruto can you still not see, Shiroi asked. Not much, it's still pretty dark, Naruto replied. Shiroi smiled. Well the reason you are able to see better now than before is because you have a bloodline called Shozengen it came from your mother. It gives you perfect night vision, allows you to see inferred and ultraviolet things. Meaning you can see when seals are used on something with your inferred vision, and bodily fluids and other things that might have dried up onto objects with your ultraviolet vision, Shiroi said. I have a bloodline, Naruto asked. Very much so, it is why Kashina was such a great tracker. It has four comma. The first allows night vision. The second allows the inferred vision. The third allows the ultraviolet vision. It don't say what the fourth does as it's different for everyone who obtains it, Shiroi said. Well is there anything else, Tsunade asked. Yes Kashina also had another bloodline that allowed her to use her chakra to heal herself and affect other people chakra. Mainly their control which I'm guessing this is why Naruto has such bad control. When he learns how to control it his control will improve, Shiroi said. Well at least we now know why Naruto's control is so terrible, Shizun said. Most people just blamed it on me, Q said. Well we need to train Naruto to use his bloodline, Tsunade said. Don't worry this have all the scrolls on Kashina family in it. Apparently the person who was taking this to Konoha was a servant of the Uzumaki family and when he heard that Orochimaru was coming that way he ran with all the Uzumaki scrolls, Shiroi said. Good, this would give him a chance to learn to use it, Tsunade said. Should we announce to Konoha how not only did they ban the son of the Yandaimi and the last leader of Whirlpool but also the last user of these bloodlines, Anko asked. Oh we will, but first we need to train them and not worry about Konoha right now. 
Tsunade said. What was you all doing up so early anyway? Enko asked. Training, Jiraiya always had me up this early training, said this was always the best time to train speed, Shiroi said. Well what will we do after breakfast, continued training or head to the next mission area, Kurunai asked. Naruto and Hinata stopped moving while they processed the information their clones sent back to them. We are being followed, Shiroi said. What are you sure, Tsunade asked. Yes my clone was destroyed by a ninja, Shiroi said. Q sniffed the air, she's right, they don't know where we are yet so I suggest we leave now, she said. In Konoha, Wolf and Inu walked into the Hokage's office, you wanted to see us, Inu asked. Yes, Inu I need you to find the root nins that went after Naruto and kill them then join the group. You can take your mask off after you kill the root. Wolf I need you to train Tenten the best you can while keeping an eye on the rest of root, Jiraiya said. When will I get to see him? Wolf asked. Soon, but right now you're the only person available to train Tenten right now. I need you for at least another month until Ino and Sakura are ready to start their element training then you can leave I promise, Jiraiya said. Fine, Wolf said then left. Why did you send me and not her? You know how she gets when she is worried about him, Inu asked. Because Naruto don't need another overprotective Kunoichi right now. I think between Q, Tsunade, Anko, Shizune, Hinata, Kurinai, and Yugo he has enough of those besides she truly is the only one who can train Tenten the way she needs to be trained, Jiraiya said. Overprotective you think Hana is overprotective of him, Inu asked. Inu, I had to threaten her with jail time in order to stop her from beating Kakashi, although he was still injured from what Tsunade did to him, she didn't even care she would have killed him if I didn't intervene, Jiraiya said. Would that have been so bad, Inu asked. Although we know he deserves that, I need him to train those three in their element, and if she would have killed him they would have put her up for execution I couldn't let that happen, Jiraiya said. I see, I'll leave immediately, Inu said. Good, Jiraiya said. Once she was gone, you can follow he but don't get caught. She has a Inu that has excellent sense of smell, and don't show yourself until she reaches them unless you're needed, he said to a figure that was in the corner. Right, again thank you, the figure then vanished. Minato what the hell was you thinking when you made this contract, Jiraiya said looking at the contract. The next morning still pissed off that her cousin got to leave and she didn't, Hannah arrived at training ground 15 at 6.05 to see Tenten waiting on her, good you're here, I'm going to work on your speed, pick up a boulder and start running, she told Tenten. What I thought we was only doing elemental training, Tenten said. Get a boulder before I chose one that is too heavy, Hannah demanded. Tenten quickly looked around and found a boulder that she was able to pick up but was still kind of heavy, good now run around the entire training ground three times and if you even think about taking a break you will get an extra lap, she told Tenten. After Tenten struggled for an hour to get around the training ground she dropped the boulder, now defend yourself, and no weapons, Hannah said then immediately went on the attack. Tenten fumbled over her feet as she tried to block a punch by Hannah, to slow, you need to get faster, she said. She kicked at her feet, you're too clumsy, I have no reason to continue training you if you're not going to put your heart into it, Hannah said. What I'm trying, I didn't even get a breath after I ran around with a boulder for an hour, Tenten replied. You're a kunoichi there is never a break especially when a client can just as easy pass you over for another shinobi. The legacy of all kunoichis is on your shoulder what will you do cave in or take it on, Hannah said as she kept her attack on Tenten. Tenten was able to do a spin kick but it was blocked, stop thinking, taijutsu isn't like jutsus or weapons, it is pure action, no thinking involved, let your instincts take over, Hannah said, Tenten threw a punch, stop, Hannah said, Tenten stopped and bent over barely able to breath, not only are you more predictable than Naruto but you're still too slow, think too much, have no set taijutsu training, and unless you have a weapon in your hand are useless, she told Tenten, Tenten just looked at her teary eyed, I told you the weight of the kunoichi reputation is on your shoulders why are you crying is it because I'm telling you the truth or because you know everything I say is true and you don't want to hear it, Hannah asked. Tenten snapped, I am trying my hardest but all you have done since you got here is criticize me, I thought we was friends why have you changed so much, she yelled. How do you think Naruto felt when his own sensei was purposely holding him back, how do you think he felt when his own teammate put a jutsu taught by his sensei through his heart? He always tried his hardest but was always criticized and he was not only a hero for holding Kayubi,
but he is also the Yandaini's son so how do you think he feels knowing that his father gave his life to save this pathetic village yet they banish him? How do you think he will feel when he finds out that he is betrothed to two clan heirs a girl he thinks of as his best friend, and another woman from a different village? How do you think I felt when Jiraiya let my cousin go see and travel with him and not me? I have to wait even longer to see my own fiancé how do you think we feel? Hannah yelled back at Tenton. Tenton looked shocked. You're betrothed to Naru Chan, she asked. Don't act so surprised. You saw us together enough to figure it out, Hannah said. Wait Naru Chan have Kayubi in him and is the Yandaimi's son, she asked Hannah. Oops did I say that, Hannah said. Yes, Tenton said. Don't tell anyone, especially people I don't trust or I will hurt you. This can't get into the wrong hands, Hannah said. I want, who else is Naru Chan betrothed to, Tenton said. You, Hinata, and the other I don't know, Hannah said. Tenton eyes went wide, I'm betrothed, she asked. Yes, your mother signed it before she died, your father didn't know it was supposed to be a surprise, Hannah said. How do you know, Tenton asked. I was there, I'm two years older than you remember, Hannah said. Oh right, but why did you take your anger out on me, Tenton asked. Because for one you needed to know the harsh truth that although you're great with any weapon you're lacking in taijutsu. I knew I would hold back on you even if I was angry, and if I had saw anyone else while I was still so pissed I would have probably killed them, Hannah said. Oh, Tenton said, leave, tomorrow you better have some scrolls on a taijutsu you want to learn, and take those weights off they will only hinder your training, Hannah said. Okay, I won't have to carry that boulder again will I, Tenton asked. Oh you're carrying that every day that's why you're taking off the weights. I have a month to whip you into shape before I leave to be with my fiancé and I plan to do just that, Hannah said. But what about elemental training, Tenton asked. Eno is learning that next month with Sakura you're going to join them in training, but right now she is studying to be a medic, so she will also be learning taijutsu and speed just not as advanced as you are, Hannah told her. So how advanced is Eno going to be at the end of the month, Tenton asked. Well Yushi will be Chunin level in Taijutsu and speed while around Junin in Chakra, Hannah said. What about me? Tenton asked. You are already Chunin level in everything but Taijutsu so you will be around Junin everything so be prepared we will not have a day off. Also learn Shadow Clone, Hannah said. Tenton just watched as Hannah walked away. This month is going to be hell, she said to herself. You Yuta, Eno asked walking up to her. Eno help me up, I can't feel my body, Tenton said. Eno you better not tell anyone what I said or I'll kill you. Tenton might have the protection of being my future sister but you don't because you're not betrothed to Naru-kun so don't make me do that. Hannah yelled just before she disappeared. She knew I was listening but said all that anyway, Eno said. She is scary when she is like this, Tenton said. I feel sorry for you this month, I saw that training she put you through, and let's say I'm happy I decided to be a medic instead of a fighter, Eno said. Shut up and put your medic training to good use, Tenton said. I just started I don't even know where to begin, Eno said. Then help me to the hospital, Tenton said. Okay, I have to get there anyway, Eno said. Team Jozu jumped through the forest trying to get away from who was looking for them without being noticed. None of them in the group wanted to fight right now. As they moved at high speed Hinata was telling Naruto the process of using chakra in the eyes since it was different than using it anywhere else and more dangerous. They came to a clearing a few miles away and Q sniffed the air, we should be fine here, at least for now, she said. Naruto stood catching his breath with Hinata, so if I use too much chakra I can go blind, he asked. Yes so it's best you start with a little until you know how much you need, but every dujutsu requires a different amount of chakra, Hinata said. Naruto nodded and pulled out the scroll on his dujutsu. He read through the first stage of it and went to work on trying to fully unlock the first comma. He slowly added chakra into his eyes making sure to follow all the directions on the scroll. As Naruto did this Shizune went through the scrolls she had. Here Hinata the basic medic exam it will show us what level you're at. She said handing Hinata the scroll. Hey everything looks clearer now, Naruto yelled out in excitement. They looked at his eyes, they was now green with a blue comma in it. As he added more chakra into his eyes his focus got better. This is awesome. Everything looks so much clearer as if a piece of plastic was taken out from in front of my face, he said. You completely unlocked the first stage, Shiroi said. Congratulations but you need to work on the other part of your bloodline, Tsunade said. Naruto thought, 
Oh the chakra part, he asked. Exactly, Tsunade said. Naruto pulled out the scroll on the second part of his Shozengen bloodline. He read the top of the scroll, it says this part is called the cursed chakra, he said. Why is it called that, Hinata asked. Because when it first came about they didn't know what it was and thought their chakra was cursed. This scroll says that it came before the Dujutsu and was one of the first ever bloodlines, and came around the time the Byakugan was formed, Naruto read. So that makes it the second or third oldest bloodline, Tsunade said. Yup, the scroll also says that a lot of people get it confused with the old blood bloodline, but this is a far more advanced version. The old blood was created from this bloodline. It also says I can remove most seals that are forced on my body, Naruto read. So that means that Kabuto is a distant cousin yours. Man that sucks ass, Anko said. Naruto thought about it. I liked it better when I didn't know that, Naruto said. What else does the scroll say, Kurunai asked. It says that this part of the bloodline is the main bloodline and the easiest to train. Most Uzumakis have mastered it within a month of training, he said. That's good here. Now how do you train it, Tsunade asked. Well it has a training schedule, it starts with basic chakra training then works up to medic chakra training then goes into the something called ultimate control training which I finish the training I will have total control over my cursed chakra bloodline, Naruto said. Well I hope you don't mind but Hinata is going to join you on that training method, she could use the extra chakra training and hopefully this will help increase her reserve. Hours later, a few hours later Q sniffed the air, I smell blood, she said. How close, Enko asked. Very, Q said. Then an Inu jumped out into the clearing with a kunoichi on its back. She took off her mask. Sorry for the interruption but I'm now joining you, she said. Sume why are you here, Naruto asked. Gaki I'm here because one, she pulled out two hands. These two was after you and Hinata they are root operatives. And two Jiraiya sent me to deal with them before they reached you and told me I can stay if I wanted to, Sume said. Well welcome to the group, we was just starting lunch, Yugo said. Hey you're Shiroi Uchiha right? Sume asked. Yes, she replied. What happened to you? When Hana heard about the Uchiha massacre she looked weeks through the bodies to find yours but never found it, Sume said. Oh sorry, I ran away when I saw what Itachi did, she pat his name out. I ended up in hot spring country. I stayed there I even got trained by Jiraiya, she said. I see well you should write her she will be glad to know you're still alive and safe, Sume said. I will, Shiroi said. Now that we all know each other, Tsunade was cut off. Nako come out, Q yelled. Everyone looked confused. Who are you talking to Q? Naruto asked. Two more Kunoichis stepped out, one with an amused look and the other with an annoyed look, Kitsune, she said. Q smiled, so this is your Jinchuriki Nibi, she asked. Everyone looked confused at the other Kunoichi in confusion. I can ask you the same about the blonde shrimp over there, Nibi said. Hey I'm not a shrimp, Naruto yelled standing up. Q grabbed the back of his jacket and pulled him back, so what if he is, she said. Nibi smiled a smile that reminded everyone of a Neko. Well I must say he fits the role of Jinchuriki, she said. Q smiled her Kitsune smile, so does yours. She looks like she thinks she can take on everyone here, she said. I can, she said. Yugido please, Nibi said. So what brings you and your Jinchuriki here, Q asked. Actually we are here for your Jinchuriki, Nibi answered. They all looked at her, oh why would you be here for him? If you want to try something I will be forced to stop you even if you're my best friend, Q said. No you got me all wrong, besides I know I can't beat the lady of all demons, she said with a hint of laughter. Yay joke all you want Nibi. But seriously why are you here last I heard you was in Kumo, Q said. I was but there are factors that made Yugito turn her back on Kumo and come join you, Nibi said. Q looked at Yugito, can you tell us why exactly you are here, she asked her. Well I'm sure you all know that he is betrothed, she said. What I'm betrothed to, Naruto yelled. Oh I forgot to tell him, Tsunade said. I see well your Atusan and Kasan came to Kumo to work out a treaty between the two countries. But the only thing Kumo would offer was a marriage and me being a Jinchuriki they offered me. Your Kasan felt that they offering me without even asking was a disgrace. But your Atusan offered you as my betrothed and your Kasan agreed because she liked me, Yugito said. But you're like 7 years older than me, Naruto said. Like that matter you just agreed to marry me and Kurunai, Enko said. 
Anyway they told me I wouldn't be the only one you're betrothed to since you will be the last with your cousin's bloodline, Yugito said. Yay, Hana is also betrothed to him, so are Tenten, Tamari, and Hanada, Sume said. Hanada choked on her drink. Excuse me I'm betrothed to Naru-kun and Atusan still tried to have me marry Teme, she asked. Unfortunately, he or she never knew about the bloodline. No one in Konoha but those who Kashina trusted the most knew about it, meaning only me, Jiraiya, and Kuranai and her old team knew, Tsunade said. So I'm betrothed to Hana-chan and Teni-chan, Naruto asked. Yup, Sume said. Well I didn't expect this. I kind of knew I was going to marry Hana also because I liked her and she already told me she would, and me and Hinata agreed to, but Teni-chan is like a Ni-chan, Naruto said. That's usually how it works, Tsunade said. This is all good to know but you two still have training to do, Q said. A month later, Naruto and Hinata had finished the chakra training and Naruto was able to control his cursed chakra and he mastered the first stage of his Shosengen. Shiroi also sent a message to Hana explaining to her everything that she'd been through. They was headed to Suna to tell Tamari about the news of her being betrothed. Tsunade started to teach Naruto medics but gave up after he was barely able to do the basics and focused on teaching him about seal jutsus. As they was about to cross the border from fire and wind country they was stopped. You know you're not allowed in fire country and if someone finds you here they will have to report it to the daimyo, she said. Well are you someone who would report us, Tsunade asked. I'm not but some rootnins are headed this way, Hannah said walking into the opening. And you didn't kill them Hannah. I thought I raised you better than that, Sume said. Hannah laughed, Kasen I could have but there wasn't a point. You did teach me killing for fun is the worst thing a kunoichi can do, she said. I guess I'll let it pass this time, who is in charge of the clan, Sume asked. I left the elders with limited power, Hannah said. Sorry to interrupt but we are in a rush, Tsunade said. Right sorry, Hannah said. She then walked up to Naruto. Hello Naru-kun did you miss me, she asked. You bet, hey guess what I have a bloodline, Naruto said hugging Hana. They started to run again and made it into wind country just as Root caught up to them. They continued to run through the desert until they was stopped again. Hello Naruto-kun and Hinata-chan how have you been since the exams, Kabuto asked. What do you want, Naruto asked. To see if something is true, Kabuto asked. Kabuto leave or we will kill you, Tsunade said. You see in order to do that you have to kill them first, Kabuto pointed behind them. They turned around to a small army of sound nens, oh shit how did they get this close, Anko said. They came up while Kabuto distracted us, Hana said. How good it is to see an old teammate again, Orochimaru said. What do you want traitor, Tsunade said. Why I need a new body and he is perfect, Orochimaru said pointing to Naruto. Yugito, Hana, Anko, Yugo, and Kurunai walked forward, you want him you go through us, they said. Orochimaru laughed, how cute a protection party, if Konoha wasn't enough to stop me what makes you think you can, he asked. Come try us, Anko said. Orochimaru snapped his fingers and the sound army attacked. Hinata and Naruto who was standing next to each other was attacked by Kabuto. Let's see if you two got any better, he said. Hinata dropped into her modified Juken stance. Naruto dropped into his stance, come find out, Naruto said. Orochimaru got behind Naruto and went through some hand signs, Juin Jutsu, cursed sealing technique he yelled. What no, Anko yelled and ran at Orochimaru. Orochimaru bit Naruto on the back of the neck, you're too late, he laughed. I'll kill you, Anko laughed while jumping at him. Hinata grabbed Naruto before he fell to the ground and looked at him with her Byakugan. What she was was surprising for her, the cursed seal was trying to force its way past the barrier that Naruto's cursed chakra built around it. They both was struggling to get the upper hand. Kayubi's chakra slowly made its way to where the seal was. Once it got there and combined with Naruto's cursed chakra he started to scream that got everyone looking at him. Hinata what's going on, Kurunai yelled. His chakra is not accepting the seal and is fighting it, Hinata said. It's pointless, Orochimaru said. No it's not, Naruto's chakra just combined with a small portion of Kayubi's to fight it, Hinata said. The black chakra slowly was being pushed out of Naruto back through the bite marks Orochimaru left. Orochimaru and Kabuto looked shocked to this, how that's impossible, Orochimaru said. 
It is for any normal chakra, but him his chakra is not normal, he has the Shozengen bloodline, Hanada said. What why is that so important it's a dujutsu right, Kabuto asked. No have you ever wondered where your bloodline came from, Tsunade asked. What do you mean, Kabuto asked. Your bloodline is a version of Naruto's bloodline, a watered down version, it was formed the same way the Sharingan was formed from the Byakugan, but unlike the Sharingan your bloodline have no new features it's just the most basic form of the cursed chakra bloodline which is part of the Shozengan, with it Naruto can expel almost any seal as long as he has the chakra to do it and with Kayubi's chakra he has more than enough to get rid of that seal Orochimaru put on him, Tsunade said. Damn, Kabuto you was supposed to do research on every genin in Konoha, how did you miss him being related to Kashina who was the last person to have this bloodline? Orochimaru yelled they then disappeared with the sound nens. Is he going to be okay? Hanada asked. Yes but we need to get him to Suna now, Tsunade said. Hana laid him on one of her inus and sat behind him and they all took off. They arrived at Suna's gates, we need to get to the hospital now, Tsunade said to the guard. Hold on I need to see your passes, he said. Look if you don't get us to the hospital now not only will you have all these kunoichis wanting to kill you, but you will also have to explain to the case cage and Tamari why you was the reason the boy she is betrothed to is dead. Yugo said stepping up. The guard gulped, right this way, he said. Tamari, Gara, and Konkuru ran into the hospital. What room is Naruto Uzumaki in? Tamari yelled. 120, the lady at the desk said. The three ran down the hall into the room. They didn't even knock just ran right in. Well you three got here fast, Tsunade said. How is he? Gara asked. Still fighting against that seal, Tsunade said. Will he be okay? Tamari asked. We can only hope right now, Shizun said. Okay what's this about Tamari being betrothed? Konkuru yelled. Everyone glared at him. What are you going to do about it if I am betrothed? Tamari asked. When did you get betrothed? Konkuru asked. Obviously it was when she was still an only kid, Gara said. I knew I was betrothed it happened on my second birthday but I never knew who to, Tamari said. Well it's to Naruto, everyone in this room but me, Sume, Hyu, Nibi, and Shizun are marrying him, Tsunade said. Wow we all are marrying the same guy, she asked surprised. It happens when you are the last in your family plus have a bloodline, Tsunade said. I guess, anyway at least all three of us can agree that he would be the best addition to our family, Tamari said. He is the only person I approve of you marrying, Gara said. As long as he is able to protect you I have no problem with it, Konkuru said. Akuno Ichi ran into the room. Gara Kun why did you run off like that? She asked out of breath. Gara looked at her, sorry Matsuri, but I had to come make sure Naruto was okay, he said. She looked at the boy on the bed. Oh he is the one you told me about right? Gara nodded, he's cute, she said. Matsuri, Gara said. What I'm just saying, besides I like someone else, but maybe he can help with my training if he is as good as you say, she said. Who do you like? Gara asked. They better pass my approval, he thought. Why? she asked. Because I can't allow anyone to date you if they can't protect you, he said. Why does it matter? Matsuri asked. Come on just say it, she thought. Because you're my second friend and the first I ever had in this village and I want to make sure you're always protected, he said. Is that all? she asked. Gara thought, yay I mean if they can't protect you then they can't date you, he said. So you only sees me as a friend, she asked. Gara actually looked confused, yay should I see you as something else, he asked. Matsuri glared at him, fine Gara, I will see you at training tomorrow, she then stormed out the room. What's wrong with her, he asked. Everyone just looked at him. Wow you and Naruto are more alike than I thought, Hinata said. Hinata come with me, Tamari said. Okay, Hinata said and they left. Gara just watched the two leave, did I miss something, he asked. Oh you missed a whole lot, it seems like all the cute and strong ninjas are also clueless, Hana said. Tamari and Hinata caught up with Matsuri, hey don't get so down, Tamari said. How can I not he only sees me as a friend, she said. Naruto only saw me as a friend before I beat it into him, Hinata said. But he is so frustrating, he won't let me talk to any boys without him being there, but he denies he likes me, Matsuri said. That's how guys are, the strong and cute ones are always the most clueless, Hinata said. What should I do, Matsuri asked. I suggest you tell him you like him, Hinata said. No that won't get through, 
You need a more direct approach, Tamari said. What do you mean, Matsuri asked. Walk back in that room pin him against the wall or floor and lay one right on the lips. Give him your best and tell him if you are only a friend then you will go find someone who likes you more than a friend, Tamari said. Matsuri blushed, will that work, she asked. Well look at it this way, there is no way he can misinterpret that, Tamari said. It will get a reaction out of him, and unless he is gay you should have a boyfriend, Hinata said. Tamari looked at her. Gara is not gay. I would believe Konkuru is since he keeps stealing my makeup, but not Gara, she said. Well time to find out, Hinata said. They followed Matsuri into the room. Gara looked at her. Matsuri I thought you was leaving, he said. She walked right up to him with a small blush. She pushed him back against the wall and made sure he couldn't get free without hurting her, which she knew he wouldn't do. She then looked at him in the eyes. She leaned in and kissed him right on the lips. She kissed him until he started to get into it then stopped and backed off. Now if you only see me as a friend tell me so I can stop wasting time on someone I will never be with and find someone who likes me as more than a friend. She then headed towards the door. She winked at Hinata and Tamari when she passed the two. Everyone was shocked at what she did none more so than Gara. He watched her open the door and ran across the room and wrapped his arms around her waist to stop her. Please don't go. I don't want to lose you, he said. She folded her arms, so am I just a friend or not, she asked, please say no, she thought. I really really like you, he said. That don't answer my question Gara. I have enough friends I want a boyfriend so pick which are you going to be, she said. Gara thought for a minute, then something hit him, what the hell is a boyfriend and why is it so different from a regular friend? Maybe Naruto knows he thought. I like you a lot, more than anyone else I ever met and I want to be with you forever, he said. So am I your girlfriend or not stop beating around the bush and answer me damn it, Matsuri yelled. Gara flinched, yes, he whispered. I didn't hear you, she said. Yes, he said a little louder. What, she said. Matsuri will you be my girlfriend, he yelled, well yell for Gara anyway. She smirked and turned around, yes I will, she then kissed him on the cheek. What did you two do to her, Anko whispered. Tell you when they are gone, Tamari whispered back. In Konoha. Jiraiya was sitting in another council meeting. This makes the 10 one in 3 days, but he was not keeping count. He had forgot what they was complaining about but was sure it had something to do with Naruto since that is all they was worried about these days. He sighed, look you're the ones who wanted Naruto banished now you want him back, he asked. Hell no we want him dead, Hiyashi yelled. He is a lost to us, having him dead will do us all some good, Danzo said. Jiraiya pinched his nose and looked over at the Ino Shika Cho team, Shibi, plus the representative for the Inazuka. What problem is he causing you now? he asked. They now are spreading rumors that the demon Gaki have a bloodline, Homura said. That's not a rumor, Jiraiya said. Excuse me, Kaharu said. It's not a rumor. You heard me the first time, Jiraiya said. How do you know the fourth didn't have any bloodlines? Sakuraza Tucson said. Jiraiya wanted to laugh at that. I'm not sure about you but I have two parents and I'm sure everyone else has. How was you born? He asked. Everyone's sweat dropped. Okay how can you be so sure he has a bloodline? Hiyashi asked. Well for one, Kashina had a bloodline, and for two it's one reason why he was betrothed to both Hinata and Hana, Jiraiya said. That demon was never betrothed to anyone in my clan even the failure, Hiyashi stated. Are you so sure? Looks like the wife didn't trust you that much either because she came to Kashina about it, Jiraiya said. Fine she is a worthless slut anyway, Hiyashi said. Jiraiya had to force himself not to attack Hiyashi. Look if you have nothing important to say then this meeting is over, he said. Everyone but the Ino Shika Cho team, Shibi, and the representative for the Inazuka left. So how is training going, Inoichi asked. Well Sakura, Tenten, and Ino all are in the middle of element training on top of their regular training, they are learning fast, Jiraiya said. So how long until you leave, Shikaku asked. Don't know depends on how fast Sakura finishes her training with Kakashi, Jiraiya said. You know Ino is going to want to go with you, and Sakura for that matter, Inoichi said. Jiraiya shrugged, I already recruited Hanabi to come with me. She said she have a few Hyugas who was close to Hinata and hate the way the clan is going that's coming with us. They're being trained by Neji in secret, Jiraiya said. When we get the word from Hana-sama I'm moving the entire clan to where she wants us to go, the representative said. Since Ino is the heir I'm going with her if she goes, Inoichi said. 
Then there will be no point for us to stay here, Shikaku said. I will have to get our colony adjusted to wherever we move to, Shibi said. That shouldn't be hard since the only place we will likely go is soon our wave, Jiraiya said. I'll send someone to each place to get a colony adjusted right away just in case this way when the other come we will have a colony base created already, Shibi said and walked out. Sakura, Ino, and Tenten stood in front of Kakashi. You three are going well now there is no more I can teach you as far as element training. You need to find jutsus for your element and start learning. I will however help you whenever you need it, he said. Sasuke was sparing Tiger. Is there anything more you can teach me? Sasuke asked. Tiger rolled his eyes. There is a lot I can teach you, but you have to be patient and learn the basics first, he said. I don't need basics, Sasuke said. How do you plan to kill Itachi if you can only do a jutsu a few times before it fails because you don't know the basics of that jutsu? That's the difference between you and Itachi, Tiger said. Itachi is a traitor and killed my family, Sasuke sneered. Do you think he could have killed all those Uchihas without pushing himself to understand everything he learned? Also you tried to run away to Orochimaru you're as much as a traitor as he is, Tiger said. If that's true then why are you training me, Sasuke asked. Because I want you to kill Naruto and Itachi, Tiger said. Why, Sasuke asked. Itachi because he ruined my life when we was younger. Tiger then took his mask off, before Hayate came along me and Yugo was dating. Then that Naruto came into the picture we had a disagreement and she eventually left me for Hayate who liked Naruto. After Hayate was killed I saw Yugo crying and went to comfort her. She didn't trust me, but needed a shoulder to cry on. He was interrupted. She used you for her own use. You no longer was any use to her so she left you and went to train Naruto, Sasuke said. I don't get used by anyone. Anyway I was her superior in the Anbu because she didn't want Hayate position, but she still didn't do what I said and Itachi because he took my eye when he went to kill your clan, he said. Sasuke looked at him. You're Shisui Uchiha ain't you? He asked. Yes, I was at one point the greatest Uchiha until I was betrayed by Itachi now you're going to kill him and get revenge for both us and restore honor to the Uchiha clan as once again the most powerful, Shisui said. Why would I want revenge for you? Sasuke asked. Think about it what better motivator than to kill the two people who took everything from us, Naruto and Itachi, Shisui asked. But how are you going to make me strong enough to kill Itachi when you couldn't beat him, Sasuke asked. Because I know a way for you to get the Mangekyu Sharingan, he said. How, Sasuke asked. Oh I'll tell you after your training is over, me and Itachi unlocked it at the same time. Now I'm going to pass my title as Shunshin no Shisui down to you and make you Shunshin no Sasuke, he said in the middle of nowhere. Itachi and Kisame was walking with no direction in mind. Itachi why do you keep running? Kisame finally asked. I'm not running I'm trying to correct my mistakes, Itachi said. What mistakes? Kisame asked. Itachi just ignored him. When he finally spoke it wasn't what Kisame was expecting, we are going to Suna, he said. What why? Kisame asked. Because I need to talk to my cousin, he said. What I thought you killed everyone except your brother, Kisame said. That's what everyone thinks, Itachi said. In Suna, Shiroi training with Anko. The two was worried about Naruto who has yet to wake up, but decided to do something productive instead of waiting in the hospital. Tsunade had Hinata check his chakra twice a day then sent her out to train and do other things besides sit in the hospital room. Nibi and Q decided to go look in the area between Sound and Konoha to see if there was anything they could find that would be useful. Everyone else trained or walked around Suna. Itachi and Kisame stood on top of the wall surrounding Suna. Why are we here again? Kisame asked. To clear something's with my cousin, Itachi said. How long is this going to take? Kisame asked. Not long she is in the hospital stay here, Itachi said then vanished. Everyone minus Nibi and Q was in the hospital room that included Tamari, Konkuru, Gara, and Matsuri. They was all either sitting or standing while talking when Itachi appeared in the middle of them. Itachi what are you doing here? Shiroi spat out. He held his hands up where everyone could see them. I'm not here to fight but to settle somethings, he said. Like what? she asked. About what happened that lead me to killing the clan, he told her. Okay I'm listening, she said. Flashback. Itachi was arriving home from his shift on the Anbo. He walked through the compound and saw someone sneaking around. He quickly went to follow them. He followed the person until they came to the council chamber. What is Shisui doing in the council chamber, he thought. 
Shisui, how is everything going? asked one of the council members. Great, within a few days we will be able to go through with our coup, Shisui said. Good in Itachi, he asked. Not a problem, he may be a genius, but he still is a level below me, Shisui said. What the hell a coup? Why would they want a coup? And if he thinks he can beat me, he is largely mistaken, Itachi thought. Shisui, I need you to keep an eye on my son. I don't think he will go along with this coup as he knew why we was doing it. He believes that the village is more important than the clan, Fugaku said. And if he tries to stop it, Shisui asked. Kill him, Fugaku said. I will, but what about Shiroi? She don't believe that the clan is bigger than the village either, Shisui said. After you get rid of Itachi you can do what you please with my niece, Fugaku said. Even have my way with her and force her to have my kids, Shisui asked. I don't care, Fugaku said. I can't believe Tucson will allow something like that, Itachi thought. The meeting ended and Itachi quickly made his way home and looked at his calendar. Okay Shiroi's birthday is on Friday she should still be on her mission so I'll leave her a copy of the jutsus I have. She is going to need it, he said quietly. He then looked at the clock. I need to see the Hokage tomorrow, he thought. The next day, Itachi was in the Hokage's office. Are you sure about this Itachi? The third asked. Yes I heard everything. They plan on doing it Friday, Itachi said. Okay we need to stop them without letting this get out, the third said. I can do it, but you have to promise to keep my O Tuto and Shiroi safe, Itachi said. Okay but you know I will have to put you in the bingo book, the third said. So, Itachi said then walked out. Friday morning, Itachi woke up and went to the Hokage's office, when do Shiroi get back from her mission, he asked. She should be back by midnight, the third said. Good, when you see her tell her everything that happened. Itachi said then vanished. With Shisui later that day, Shisui was walking through the compound and saw Itachi sitting next to the river and went to join him. Itachi how is everything? he asked. Itachi stood and looked at him. Shisui if you had to do something that you think was the right thing would you? he asked. Of course, Shisui said. So if a group of shinobis was planning a coup and you knew about it would you kill them to stop it? Itachi asked. Shisui though about it, yes I would if I could. No one likes backstabbers especially when they're your friends, he said. I see, Itachi then took a step back. Shisui prepare yourself I'm going to stop this coup you and the clan is planning, he said. Shisui was surprised by this and didn't react in time to Itachi's attack and his eye was cut out by his katana. Your days end here Shisui, Itachi said then sliced across Shisui's face and kicked him into the river. He walked through the compound and started to kill everyone he knew was in the coup. The last person he killed was his Atusan and walked out the room and saw to his surprise and horror Shiroi had just walked into the house with her present from Itachi. She looked at him with surprise and fear then turned and ran. Itachi just stared, damn it, he yelled. Makoto woke up, Itachi what did you do, she asked. Sorry Kasen but everyone I killed was going to do a coup and I couldn't allow that, he went over to her, I'm sorry but I had to, he said. She nodded, I understand I would have done it also if I was in your shoes, she then hugged him. I know you're going to have to leave the village, but know that I always will love you and I will do everything to protect what's left of the clan, she said. Itachi kissed her on the forehead, I'll visit our old playground the 20th day of every month, he then walked out. Shisui was able to get out of the river, Itachi you will pay, he yelled and slowly walked through the village. He saw everyone from the coop was dead. Okay you want to play I will corrupt your most precious person and turn him into my weapon. He then turned into a Itachi lookalike. He killed everyone and walked into Itachi's cousin's room. Itachi ran back when he felt the chakra for the jutsu be used. No leave her alone. He yelled and jumped at Shisui. To late, Shisui said and drove his katana into her heart. Sasuke was standing in the door, Itachi, he said. The real Itachi looked at Shisui with hate. You will pay with your life and everything you love, I will make sure that you never see happiness before I slowly kill you, he then turned and left. Flashback ends. Shiroi looked at him, I remember that, the pain I felt then was greater than anything I ever felt, she said. I'm sorry you had to see it, I tried to be gone before you came back, but fate wasn't on my side, Itachi said. Why was they doing a coup, Shiroi asked. A Tucson didn't like the way the third ran the village, Itachi said. What will you do now? she asked. I don't know yet, he said. Well you're no longer my enemy but I still don't trust you. 
But Shisui he now became my target and I will make sure he dies painfully, Shiroi said. I was hoping you would help me with that, Itachi said. What do you mean, Shiroi asked. You have a mature Sharingan right, Itachi asked. Yes, she replied. Well I can give you the Mangekyu Sharingan, he said. How, I'm not killing you to get it, Shiroi said. No it's through training, it's the same way me and Shisui got it, Itachi said. Let me think about it, she said. Okay, he then walked out the room. What do you all think, she asked. I remember something about that. Shisui was supposed to have committed suicide, Anko said. I wouldn't put killing the rest of your clan past Shisui he was always the jealous type, first Naruto, then Hayate, then Itachi when he was accepted into the Anbu, Yugo said. I think you should do the training, Kurenai said. Hinata did you detect any lie with your Byakugan? Shiroi asked her noticing she still had her Byakugan active. No throughout the entire story his heart rate didn't change once, Hinata said. Okay thank you, Shiroi said. She went to let Itachi back in, you can come in, she said. So have you reached a decision, he asked. Yes I have decided to do this training, but only if I can bring someone along with me, she said. Okay chose your person wisely not everyone can survive this training. Out of the 50 Uchihas that did it only me and Shisui survived, Itachi said. I'm not worried, Hinata has skills far beyond what any Uchiha or Hayuga is capable of, Shiroi said. Good let's go this training lasts for 3 months and is very strict you won't have room to make a mistake, Itachi said. No we stay in Suna during this training and once it's over you leave, Shiroi said. Q and Nibi was looking at the pile of corpses they found. You think any of them are useful, Nibi asked. Q looked, one is missing, there was a girl also, she said. You mean that girl that's hiding behind that tree up there? Nibi asked. Yes let's go get her, Q said. What about these guys? Nibi asked. Q shrugged, they are useless to us, she said. They walked up to the tree and went around it. What do you fucking want can't you see I'm already dying? To Yuya yelled. Whoa hold on a minute, maybe we can help you, Q said. How can you help me? To Yuya asked. You know Naruto? Q asked. The blonde, Tayuya asked. Yes, he was kicked out of his village and needs trustworthy friends, Q said. Why was he kicked out, Tayuya asked. Because he bruised us that Uchiha who was trying to run away to Orochimaru, Q said. That's a shitty reason to kick a good shinobi like him out. He is annoying as fuck but not that bad, Tayuya said. So do you want to join us, Q asked. Sure not like I have anywhere else to go and if I stay by myself too much longer I'll die, she said. How did you survive all this time with your injuries, Nibi asked. I might be injured but I'm still a kunoichi and can kill small animals for food, and there is a lake a little way away from here I got water from, Tuyuya said. Well that's good you survived all this time, Q said. Q what about that guy up there, Nibi asked pointing to Kimimaro. Q looked at him, now that's usable, let's get his corpse I know the perfect shinobi to give his bloodline to, Q said. What the fuck are you two doing, to Yuya asked. We are saving this bloodline, I know a ninja who could use it, also I might put it in someone else I know, Q said. We could give it to you also if you want it, Nibi said to Tuyuya. What really, to Yuya asked. Yup, Nibi said. I won't come as pale as he was will I, she asked. No nothing will change except you will have a bloodline now, Nibi said. When can you do it, to Yuya asked. Q thought about, let's go to Konoha hospital and do it. We can put a genjutsu up on her so no one knows who she is, she said. Good idea and she won't last all the way to Suna, Nibi said. In Konoha, Q and Nibi was able to get into the village with Tuyuya under a genjutsu without much trouble. They had the dead body sealed inside a scroll. Tuyuya was taken into a hospital room where the medics healed her while Q and Nibi went to the Hokage's office. They walked in and was surprised to see Tenten, Ino, and Sakura there, but Nibi had to grab Q when she saw Kakashi. The key she was given off made the other take notice and they turned around, who are you two, Jiraiya asked. Kakashi's eyes widened, you what are you doing here, he yelled pointing at Kayubi. Shut it pervert, Q said. Listen here you, if you have a problem with me then tell me, Kakashi said. Nibi and Q had the decency to look shocked that he was challenging her. Nibi shook her head and let Q go. Wow you're either very strong or very stupid. She said backing up. You three might want to get out the way. She said to Ino, Tenten, and Sakura. They moved to the other side of the room. Hitaki you have five seconds to get out of my sight, Q 
Q said. You don't scare me, Kakashi said. One, Q started. Kakashi looked at her. Two, Q said. Are you serious, Kakashi said. Three, Q said. He is really going to take her on, Nibi asked. Four, Q said. What's going on, Sakura asked. Five, Q said. Well he was given the chance, Nibi said. Q vanished and Kakashi hit the wall behind Jiraiya, with enough strength to break a rib or two, all in the blink of an eye. Jiraiya, Sakura, Ino, and Tenten was surprised by her speed. She walked slowly to Kakashi and picked him up by his hair and threw him back over the desk and vanished again and kicked him in the chest, breaking three more ribs. She then drew a katana that looked like a tail out from nowhere and swung it at Kakashi. Nibi vanished and blocked Q's katana with her own. Leave Hitaki or she will kill you I can't hold her off for long, she said. Kakashi slowly got up and shunshined out the room. Why did you stop me Nibi? If I wasn't so used to your sudden interference to stop me I wouldn't have been able to stop my weapon, Q said. Nibi stood up holding her left arm. That is what you call stopping your weapon. Damn I think my arm is broken and I'm a demon so that would have literally crushed every bone in his body, she said. That's what I was trying to do, Q said. I realize that, but we have a reason for being here, Nibi said after she healed her arm. Right let's get this over before I run into him again and kill him, Q said. Next time I want try and stop you, Nibi said flexing her arm. Q looked at her, sorry, she said. The pain is going away, Nibi said waving it off. Um who are you too? Jiraiya asked. I'm Nibi the two-tailed Nako, the second in command of the demon realm, and my Jinchuriki is Yugito, she said. I'm Q the nine-tailed Kitsune, lady and ruler of the demon realm, and my Jinchuriki is Naruto, she said. You're Kyubi, Tenten asked. Yes, Q said. Nibi nudged Q, is he always like that, she asked pointing to Jiraiya. Yes, he is the self-proclaimed super pervert, Arrow Gigi to Naru-kun though, Q said. Wait Naruto has Kayubi in him. I thought the Yandaimi killed it, Sakura said. Q looked over at her and sneered at her, which reminded the three of Akitsune. What would you know Haruno all you did was beat him while kissing up to that traitor Uchiha, she said. Q calmed down, she is not even worth the effort, Nibi said looked at her and assessing her chakra level. You say that now, but you wasn't the one who constantly had to heal Naruto because of her. Q said pointing directly at Sakura. Hey I know I made a mistake in my past but I'm trying to change, Sakura said. Q sneered again, I want and will never take your word for anything, anything you have to say or do will be like a tadpole in my eyes, Q said. Nibi shook her head, what did you do usually Q is so forgiving, she said. I wasn't the best person in the past, Sakura said. Okay what can I do for you, Jiraiya asked after he finished staring at Q and Nibi's assets. You finally finished staring pervert, we need to borrow Rock Lee, Q said. Why? Jiraiya asked confused. She unsealed Kimimaro, he is dead, but we can still make use of him by passing his bloodline on and I want to use Lee since he can't use chakra this will strengthen his chakra system enough to get to the level it should be at, Q said. Hey can I have it too, his bloodline will work great with my weapon training and my kids will have more than my good looks, Tenten said. You won't stop rubbing being betrothed to Naruto in my face will you, Ino asked. No because you want to, but have to want to ask haha, Tenten said. Q sweat dropped at the two, short Tenten, she said. Hey Q, Tenten said. What, Q answered. I think you should give Sakura another chance, she been through a lot since Naruto left, and not only from me and Ino but from Hana and Jiraiya also, she said. That's not enough reason to forgive how she treated Naruto, Q said. Maybe but it's a start in the right direction, Tenten said. Q thought about it, come on Q this is what made you so great, you're always willing to give, even the worst demons, another chance what will it hurt to give this girl another chance, Nibi said. Q looked at Sakura for a minute, find one chance don't blow it, she said. Sakura's face lit up, thank you so much, but why do you hate Kakashi sensei so much, she said. Yay Q what could he have done, Nibi asked. His sensei was the Yandaimi, he was like an Atusan to Kakashi and taught him to treat all equally yet he treats Naruto as if he doesn't even exist, Q said. Ain't the Yandaimi Naruto's Atusan at least that's what the paper said, Sakura asked. Yes, Tenten said. Hey what kind of katanas was those, Jiraiya asked. Those wasn't katanas, but our tails materialized, Q said. 
You mean that even though she blocked your tail with her own it still broke her arm, Jiraiya asked. It would have done more than that had I not adjusted the strength at the last minute, Q said. The four looked wide-eyed, she is not the lady of the demons for nothing. Besides I might be in second in command but I'm only the second strongest of all the demons I'm only second in command because she chose me to be, Nibi said. Eno here is a elemental katana I got it for Naru-kun. But I decided to give him one of my tails as a katana so you want need it you can have it, Q said tossing her the weapon. Thanks I needed a weapon, Eno said. In Suna three weeks later, Q, Nibi, and Tayuya was just reaching Suna after their trip to Konoha to transfer Kimimaro's bloodline into Tenten, Lee, and Tayuya. They walked through the village looking for the rest of the group, Q, they heard from behind them. They turned around and saw Naruto running up to them, Hey Naru-kun, you know Tayuya? Me and Nibi saved her and she is joining us, Q said. Oh, Naruto said looking at her. What the fuck are you looking at, Tayuya asked. Sorry, Naruto said sarcastically. Come on you two, where's everyone else, Nibi asked. Well they're around this village somewhere, but Shiroi and Hinata are with Itachi to train, Naruto said. Why, Q asked. Naruto told them the story that he was told from Tamari. Well hope they succeed, Nibi said. Yay and I was able to remove that seal Orochimaru put on me. It was painful as hell, Naruto said. What you had the curse seal and got it removed how? Tayuya asked. It was because I have a bloodline called Shozengen and part of it is the cursed chakra I was able to use it to remove the seal, Naruto said. Damn you're lucky, I wish I could remove it, Tayuya said. Don't worry Tayuya I sealed it off so it shouldn't bother you, Q said. Yay I know now I'm going to fucking train, Tayuya said. Can I join you, Naruto asked. Fine but so you know I'm trying to get a handle on my keke jenke, Tayuya said. I didn't know you had a bloodline, Naruto said. I didn't Q and Nibi gave me, Tenten, and Lee Kimimaro bloodline, Tayuya said. Awesome I wish I could get that, Naruto said. Sorry Naru-kun, but adding it to your bloodline would be pointless because your cursed blood would make it useless. But I could put it into you so you could pass it on to your kids if you want, Q said. Two months and a week later, Q and Nibi gave the Shikatsu Mayaku to Tamari, Matsuri, and a few other Suna shinobis, she also provided them all with a scroll which Nibi created using the information from Kimimaro's knowledge. Tayuya, Tamari, and Matsuri was able to learn to use the bloodline almost completely thanks to the scrolls. Naruto unlocked the second and third commas from his dujutsu granting him infrared and ultraviolet vision. A few times Naruto walked around the village with his dujutsu active looking in ultraviolet mode and saw some things he didn't want to see so he always used it in either night vision or infrared unless he needed the ultraviolet vision. In the hospital room for Shiroi and Hinata, Tsunade and Shizune was checking them. Once they was done they both sighed, well they are fine, but their body is physically and mentally exhausted, they will need a few days of sleep to regain their strength, Tsunade said. What Itachi had them train until they couldn't take it anymore I'll kill him, Naruto yelled. Naruto be quiet we are in a hospital, Tsunade said. But Kasen, he started. No but son Itachi clearly told them both that they could die from this training yet they both went through with it so the only ones to blame for this is themselves, Tsunade said. Okay Kasen, Naruto said. Are we staying in this village when they get better, Yugito asked. Actually I was thinking about starting our own small village in Wave, Tsunade said. I think that's a good idea, it would let us make our own rules and we don't have to report to anyone we don't like, Kurenai said. Well what do everyone think, Tsunade said. Fine with me, I like Wave and I get to see Inari again, Naruto said. I want to go Suna is so boring, Matsuri said. Count us in, Tamari said for her two brothers. It's not like the rest of us have a fucking choice, Tayuya said. I agree with her, Anko said. A month later. Ayame was sitting in the living room of her small two-bedroom apartment. In front of her sat a box that she kept her secrets in. She opened the box and pulled out an all-white kunoichi outfit. She put it on, she stood and looked at herself in the mirror. She was wearing white pants that stopped just below her knees, a white shirt that was tied to her body, a hite that was on a white cloth. Over all this she had on a white trench coat. Around her waist she had a black sash with a katana on her lower back with the sash holding it up. She nodded to herself, let's see if I can still do this, she said to herself and went through some hand signs and vanished in a swirl of leaves. 
She appeared outside her apartment and made sure there was no Anbu around then ran off into the forest. She reached a clearing in the forest and stood there. Damn it's been so long since I did this shit, she said. Almost nine years if I remember correct, she heard. Yes it has been that long since we were a team hasn't it hasn't it Itachi, she said. Yes it has sorry I haven't came to visit, he said. Stop talking either help me train or leave me alone right now, Ayame said. That's all for now if you enjoy then please like share and do comments.